the All-Star Game, the American League Championship Series, and the World Series. America's Grand Game is on Fox. We are Fox Sports! The entire baseball world can't wait for these teams to head out there. You have got to be kidding. The greatest rivalry in the history of baseball, the Cardinals and the Cubs. Here we go. Baratek and A-Rod. As if this game needed any more emotion. The biggest comeback in postseason baseball history. One of the fiercest rivalries in all of sports. Welcome to the DirecTV pregame show on Fox. Follow your favorite MLB team no matter where you live with DirecTV. And if you had DirecTV last night, you saw a classic at Fenway. Two down in the ninth. Man on for Jason Bay. Delivers off of Mariano Rivera. 12th blown save off of Rivera against the Sox, most against any one team. He hates that episode of Baywatch, and we are on to extras. We're in the 11th, baseball's leading hitter, Kevin Euclid. Looking more and more like John Malkovich's character, Cyrus and Con Air, with the game winner, and the Red Sox win it 5-4. So just a few hours later, the fans are back on this beautiful New England afternoon for this classic rivalry. Old friends down in Florida, A.J. Burnett and Josh Beckett going at it today. Beckett back from a five-game suspension for throwing over the head of the Angels, Bobby Abreu. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Rivalry Saturday here on Fox. It's all presented by DirecTV. I'm Chris Rose coming your way live from Fenway Park. Red Sox and Yankees or the Cubs and Cards coming your way in mere moments. But right now at the top of the show, we're going to welcome in a guy that Boston fans want to see at the end of today's game. Let's get to know Red Sox all-star closer Jonathan Papelbon a little bit better. When did you realize Yankees-Red Sox was a different kind of series? Uh, day one, from the very beginning, no question about it. It's a passion that's driven by pure uh, hatred. Now, you went to Mississippi State as a first baseman. Which of your teammates could you definitely take deep over the Green Monster? All of them. Beckett? Oh, Beckett, all of them. You could touch Wakefield's knuckler? I already told Wakefield that actually in spring training. He got a little off at me, but I'm an athlete, man. You know, most people on their honeymoon, maybe they go to Hawaii, maybe they go to Europe. Where'd you go? Um, how did you know about this? I went to uh, St. Lucia. It was actually a living hell. You went to Disney World, didn't you? Oh, yeah, Disney World, too. Do you have the Mickey ears still? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I still got them. Let's be honest. How many rides could Pedroia get on without parental supervision? I don't know. Isn't it like 56 inches, the height requirement? And so? Yeah, so probably zero. And those fans back in New York that are awaiting your arrival for the first time at brand new Yankee Stadium, look into the camera. What do you want to say to them? Can't wait to see you guys. Hey, New York fans, uh, you don't have to wait to have Papelbon come to New York in order to see him. He's just a click away. Log on to FoxSports.com for more of my interview with Jonathan Papelbon. And while you're there, you can read the works of Ken Rosenthal. Kenny, a lot of injury news for the Yankees. They put on the DL Ching Ming Wong and Brian Bruni, both pitchers, and A-Rod's replacement, Cody Ransom. What's the biggest injury of those three? Bruni, Chris, and they're hoping that elbow will keep him down only 15 days. But without him, the Yankees lack a clear setup man. The good news is that Alex Rodriguez, remember him? I do remember him. Okay, he could be back in minor league games starting on Friday and could return by May 8th. Uh, injury news for the Cubs as well. Yes, Carlos Marmel, MRI on his knee today, showed only a minor sprain. He could be out only a few days. Same goes for Aramis Ramirez and Milton Bradley. Both are available, but only to pinch hit. So what this means is that the Cubs right now do not have a backup infielder. We could see, if there's a double switch, Alfonso Soriano oh, back at second base. Look out below if that happens. Uh, Dr. Rosenthal, thank you very much. Continue to read your work on FoxSports.com. Coming up next, Red Sox and Yankees. Sox going for their ninth straight win. Some of you will see Albert Pulse and the Cards take on Derek Lee and the Cubs. Fox Saturday Baseball, presented by DirecTV. First pitch is next. You're watching Major League Baseball on Fox. Welcome to an absolutely gorgeous afternoon at Fenway Park in Boston, Massachusetts, as we renew this rivalry between the New York Yankees and the Boston Red Sox. 
And now welcome to the broadcast booth, everybody. I am Joe Buck. That is Tim McCarver. And last night was proof positive yet again that when these two teams get together at Fenway, anything can happen in that 5-4 win for the home team in 11 innings. And now today, a very good pitching matchup to similar type pitchers in A.J. Burnett and Josh Beckett. Two dominant right-handers. And if they bring their A game today, you won't see better stuff from any two right-handers in the major leagues. A.J. Burnett has never been beaten by the Red Sox, and everybody knows about the prowess of Josh Beckett in the big game. And any time the Yankees and Red Sox meet, it's a big game. So off we go, and here we are, Fenway Park on a Saturday afternoon. You know the faces by now. Here they are, some newcomers to this rivalry, the first pitch. Chris might have said this a moment ago, but I promise it's next. Hey, reach for the perfect balance of flavor and refreshment. Budweiser, the great American lager. And the great American rivalry continues between these two. Here is a look at the Yankee lineup. It's brought to you by Taco Bell. Think outside the bun. Derek Jeter leads it off. Johnny Damon, the former Boston outfielder. Mark Teixeira for his year in a Yankee uniform. Mick Swisher cleans it up. Then Robinson Cano, Jorge Posada, Hideki Matsui is the DH. Angel Barroa just came up and was added to the roster. And Brett Gardner is batting in the nine spot in center field. And here is Josh Beckett who is so far two and one and coming off that suspension he got as a result of that pitch up and in on Bobby Abreu back on April 12th. Glad you're with us. Away we go. Ball one. So it's Beckett and Burnett. It's the Yankees and the Red Sox and it's New York nine and seven to start the season. Boston ten and six and they've won eight straight. And there are the numbers so far for Beckett. And a ground ball. What a good play by Lowell. Bad hip and all. One out. Made a terrific diving stop in last night's game to his right and now makes a play to his left. Boy, this is big time. Mike Lowell, not even a step. That's how, bar how hard the ball was hit. And from his knees, throws out Jeter. Talked to Terry Francona, the manager of the Red Sox prior to the game, and asked him if he's been at least a little surprised with the stamina and strength that Lowell has shown after having that hip surgery. Went through similar type procedure as Alex Rodriguez, had the same type injury, and he said, yeah, a little bit. The only game he didn't play was the back end of that doubleheader, and he's been able to answer the bell every day. Might have lost a step with his speed, but so what? He's hitting the ball great. Playing terrific defense as he's shown the last two games. And he was never fast anyway, said Terry. One ball, one strike on Johnny Damon. There's Terry Francona, who was Damon's manager when the Red Sox won it all back in 2004. Here's a 1 1 from Beckett. Strike two. Damon now and Teixeira on deck. And Joe Girardi in his second year as manager of the Yankees. Two and two. Injuries have already hit this Yankee club very hard. And over the last 24 hours, they've made a number of roster moves. And as you heard Kenny Rosenthal talk about prior to this game on our pregame show, one of the big losses is the guy who's been setting up Rivera, Brian Bruni. He's got a bad elbow and is on the DL. Here's a 2 2 pitch. Up and away, full count. They play Damon to hit it the other way. To Sharon next in a 3 2 pitch from Beckett. He's ripped into center field for a one out base hit. Take a look at the scouting report for the right hander Josh Beckett who works with one on one out. Joe we talked about that intimidating uh, presence of Beckett on the mound and ho hum fastball curveball slider and change no big game pitcher uh, that's active today really combines those four elements the fastball curve slider and change any better than Beckett. Here is Teixeira. Get the feeling this is like a boo fest here. 
you know, the first three batters, Derek Jeter, for obvious reasons, Damon was a Red Sox, and now Mark Teixeira. And a ball up and away. Teixeira was courted by the Red Sox. They had a meeting in Texas over the offseason. The chance they could get a deal done, they didn't. They offered 170 million. The Yankees signed to Shera for 180 million. That's up and away. The interesting part of it, though, is the Red Sox really didn't commit any long-term money to anybody after they did not lock up to Shera. So consequently, they don't have a ton of money already on the books for 2010. Expect a leaner payroll. They have a real good core of young players here for Terry Francona, and they continue to add to it. But what it did point out, Tim, is what's kind of played out here in the early going. They didn't know what they were going to get out of David Ortiz, who had a down year last year, very poor postseason, is off to a slow start, doesn't have a home run yet. It's their first full year without Manny Ramirez. They were looking for somebody to to sit in that three or four spot in the lineup and they didn't get it. And now a walk to Teixeira puts two on with one out here in the first inning and a chance for Nick Swisher. Well, Jason Bay answered uh, some of that criticism last night with the two run home run to tie it and then Euclid of course won it in the 11th inning. But the Red Sox have put I think the emphasis on the right area primarily pitching signing Brad Penny and John Smoltz and waiting in the wings and I mean um, he's not too far away as Daniel Bard the uh, the young right hander who is now pitching in Pawtucket and he is supposed to be something a legitimate 100 mile per hour pitcher right with great stuff who Francona says already looks like a big leaguer here is Swisher with two on one out a chance for the Yankees and a strike from Beckett. Swisher off to a great start in his first year with New York. Hit just 219 last year, but here he is at 302 with four homers and 12 RBIs. Good breaking ball for strike two he's doing everything right he even got to ring the opening bell New York Stock Exchange on Thursday April 23rd and the market was up the Dow went up I hope he rings it every day next week keep ringing it we all do <laughs> runners on at first and second with one out and 0 2 count on Nick Swisher. ball up and away. Yeah the, the Red Sox have more options because of their depth and because of their farm system with guys you talked about Bard who's waiting in the wings. Well, tomorrow night starter Justin Masterson is a guy who can start who could set up maybe even could close if they didn't have a guy like Papelbon or if something should happen. Who knows where he will spend the majority of his time here in 2009 what role he can do any of it. And That's a cross up right there. Wow. See Jason Veritek looking for the fastball. He got the curveball. Watch Veritek's reaction behind home plate. Whoa. Jason saying, uh, We've got to talk. If you're looking for the express and you get the local, it's much better than the other way around. Pretty long conversation for yeah. a second side. Yeah. Well, for the Red Sox, at least Veritek caught it somehow and kept the runners at first and second and keeps the double play alive. Here's a chance for Swisher. The count was against him 0 2. Now it's even. Two balls, two strikes. Cano on deck. And a grounder to first is a foul ball, just foul. Calling that ball foul is the crew chief of this group, Gary Cedarstrom. He's at first. Behind the plate today is Jim Wolf. Brian Onora is out at second base. And Field and Colbreth is at third. One of the few guys named Fielden to umpire in the big leagues. 
Lead runner is Johnny Damon. The trail runner is Teixeira. And first inning trouble for Beckett. He's four and one in his last five starts against the Yankees. Another 2 2. And another foul. The Yankees coming out swinging today, and it is very difficult when you lose a ball game like the Yankees lost last night. Joe Girardi you could almost see it on his face last night. The two run home run to tie it by Jason Bay off Mariano Rivera. And anytime the Yankees see Mariano Rivera blow a save, it is uh, it's shocking to them because he doesn't do it that often. I think it's surprising to any baseball fan to witness something yeah. like that. Mm -hmm. the Yankees had won 86 consecutive games when leading after eight until last night. The 2 2. Another foul. Good at bat by Swisher. This will be the 20th pitch of this first inning for Beckett coming here. He originally got a six game suspension after Bray you had called time in that game out in California and then Beckett threw it up and in around the head of Abreu. They reduced it to five games. Beckett still had an appeal on the books and then pulled it back and served his five games which did not really cost him a start. Pushed him back a day and here he is on Saturday. Here is a 2 2 pitch. Yet again to Swisher. And down and away. So from 0 and 2 to 3 and 2, and a little erratic here at the start for Beckett. I think a situation where Damon's going to be running, Mark Teixeira running. You're the catcher in this situation. And swish your swings and misses. You may opt to go to second base instead of third because the faster runners on at second. Runners are not going and Swisher with a base hit into center field. Here comes Damon. Throw by Ellsbury is cut off and the Yankees score first here this afternoon. Swisher stays hot. He's reached in all 17 games. That he's played in with the Yankees and it's one to nothing New York here in the first. Josh Beckett going behind home plate to back up and he said something to Veritek on the way back out to the mound. He may have shaken him off a lot of times uh, pitchers won't shake with their head they'll stare a catcher off and just stare and and stand on the mound until the catcher changes the sign. But this is Beckett coming from behind home plate. And whispering something to Veritek. So the runners at first and second, one out for Cano. He's off to a great start, hitting 354 here in April. And the ball misses away. So the Yankees have scored, have a chance for more, and will have A.J. Burnett on the mound. He has been the stopper in the rotation so far for Joe Girardi. Cano is a career 351 hitter here at Fenway Park. And he has the count in his favor 2 0. Everything has been away to these left handed hitters from Beckett. Mm -hmm. Switch hitting Posada on deck. Two oh pitch is pop foul and that ball will get out of play. That's what happens when you're falling behind in the count. You have to keep the ball away because no good pitcher wants to come inside with a count two and oh two and one three and one. So when you fall behind you, you really take the inside part of the plate away from the pitcher or he takes it away from himself. There are the numbers for Cano against Beckett a three thirty three average with a home run and three strikeouts two one pitch late swing and strike two. Somebody just paid a lot of money to get a thrill right in front of the Yankee dugout as that foul ball hit the padding right in front of that guy who is hoping his heart rate returns to normal. 
And meanwhile, the guy in the corner is the 100-year-old bat boy, Arthur Gidden. Here's a little pop-up into center field, and Ellsbury is there. Two out as Cano flies to center. They celebrated Arthur Gidden here before the game. He's the honorary bat boy. He was a 13 year old bat boy for the Boston Braves back in 1922. Got to meet Babe Ruth among some of the other legends of this game. Bloomfield, Connecticut, celebrating birthday number 100. And right there in the corner, right by the Yankee dugout, there he sits. 100 years old tomorrow. What a sweet story. <laughs> he has been a media darling here the last couple of days. Here's Posada. Two on with two out. Back at trying to keep this a one run first. And that one's at least inside to a left-handed batter, but it missed ball one. Posada hitting 283, three homers, 12 RBIs, and trying to capitalize on a chance to add to this lead. Another ball, and again, another batter where Beckett falls behind. Yankees left 15 runners on last night. We're four for 19 with runners in scoring position in game one of this three game set. Here's a 2 0. And ball three. And this has been a serious effort for Beckett here in the first inning this afternoon. He has fallen behind all six hitters he's faced. And generally speaking, you're not going to win that way. And of course, Josh knows that. John Farrell is pitching coach watching as strike one makes it three and one. Two hits in the inning, a walk to Teixeira. Swisher with the RBI, he's at first. And a little looper into left field might fall. This ball's a hit. Another run. Teixeira scores without a play, and it's 2-0 New York. That's that pitch away, Joe, that you were talking about. Jason Bay having to respect Posada's power. But a good piece of hitting by Posada going to left field on that tailing fastball and it plopping right in front of Jason Bay is the Yankees tack on. So here's John Farrell out to talk. And Beckett. With that brief meeting with his catcher and his pitching coach. Coming off a two to one victory against Baltimore his last time out but he's thrown more out of the strike zone than in it and he's paid for that here in the first inning. Everybody talks about the fundamentals of baseball and they rarely mention the fundamentals of pitching. Well the fundamentals of pitching start with strike one. It's the most important pitch of any at bat and Beckett has not had that so far in the first inning. Now Matsui gets out of the way of one inside and around the ankles ball one. So now one for seven with first pitch strikes. Lead runner is Swisher at second with Jorge Posada the runner at first. That's low, 2 0. Oh. They are jammed into Fenway Park here this afternoon. They continue to try and add seats here. They've added more seats out in right field. And that pavilion area. And they will have 480 consecutive sellouts by the end of this day. 
a streak that started back in May of 2003 here at Fenway. Here's a 2 0. Good pitch from Beckett, 2 and 1. Fooled Matsui, who is six for his last 14, swinging the bat. Well, Matsui, uh, with that bad knee, Kevin Long, the hitting instructor of the Yankees, saying that uh, he's trying to start things so early so his knee doesn't hurt. And that was one of those swings exactly what Kevin Long was talking about. He's had operations on both knees. The more recent one is left knee, which is that back knee, supplies a lot of the power as he's up on the count here, three and one. Hideki had that drained last week, fluid building up. Good spot to hit here. Three balls and a strike. Two on with two out. Beckett has to bring it in, and Matsui grounds to first. Easy play for Euclid. The Yankees get two. RBIs by Swisher and Posada. Base hit by Damon. RBI hit Swisher. Posada got the second run home after a half at Fenway. 2 0 New York. We welcome you back to Fox Saturday Baseball presented by DirecTV. Follow your favorite MLB team no matter where you live with DirecTV. Take a look at the Red Sox lineup. It's brought to you by Taco Bell. Think outside the bun. Jacoby Ellsbury leads off. Dustin Pedroia, the reigning MVP, bats the number two spot. Then David Ortiz, Kevin Euclid, J.D. Drew, Jason Bay in the middle. Mike Lowell is at third. Jason Veritek is the catcher. And Nick Green is the shortstop. Third man on the depth chart. They're down to Nick Green, and he's played well. And here is A.J. Burnett, another big-priced free agent added over the offseason. And so far, Tim, well, I want to throw Pettit in there, but Burnett has given the Yankees all they have needed with every start he's made. Uh, absolutely. Our scouting report, exhilarating stuff. And, and that's the perfect word for him, the action through the strike zone. And he has been perfect against the Sox. He's 5-0 for his career in Eight games against Boston and 3 0 here at Fenway. Kobe Ellsbury is first up. And A.J. Burnett, who was a teammate of Josh Beckett's, back with the Florida Marlins, misses up and away ball one. A strike. 94 mile an hour fastball poured in by this right hander who spent the early years with the Florida Marlins three years with the Toronto Blue Jays and ten times has been on the disabled list Ellsbury fights it off and flips it into left for Damon one out how good has A.J. Burnett been against the Boston Red Sox. Well, he's 5 0 in his career. ERA of two and a half and eight starts. And at Fenway, even better. 3 0 with an ERA of 0.4 in three starts. And right now, he has gone 16 straight innings without allowing an earned run here at Fenway Park to the Red Sox. Here's Pedroia. Dustin is hitting 284, which is saying a lot, Tim, considering how he started this season. He's the reigning AL MVP, Gold Glove Award winner, and he is really one of the little fighters on this club or any club across Major League Baseball. Pound for pound, as feisty as they get. And up on the count here, 2 0. How about this? AL Rookie of the Year. Won the World Series in 07. Last year did it all. Silver Slugger Award as well. Was a starter in the All-Star Game. And despite all that, when he first came to the big leagues, Terry Francona didn't know that he would ever hit. Two and one. I remember that two years ago when Pedroia had that atrocious April. And Terry uh, telling us we were doing, uh, doing a game in late April and saying, well, our, our scouts say this guy can play, so we, we're going to try to stay with him as long as we can. And they're glad they did. Here's a 2-1. Into right field. Another hit for Pedroia, who is red hot. One on, one out. 
Now an eight game hitting streak for Dustin Pedroia. You don't think he's going to get through the zone that strike zone but he always makes it. Now the great record producer Jerry Wexler used to tell me that the two singers that never seem to get through the zone is Frank Sinatra and Ray Charles. They never seem to be able to catch up with the tune. Pedroia is that way from a hitter standpoint. You don't think he's going to be able to make it but he always gets there. And here's a guy who has not been making it at least power wise production wise for the Red Sox David Ortiz. Listed at 33 years old and there are some grumblings. Around the Red Sox that maybe age has caught up to a guy who has been not only one of the most productive but one of the most clutch hitters that this game has seen in a long time. Now working without. His former teammate Manny Ramirez. And sitting in that number three spot. In this Boston Red Sox lineup looking for his first home run and steady grounds to Jeter who will step and throw for the double play. Score at 6 3. We'll talk more about Big Poppy next time around. We go to the second at Fenway 2 0 Yankees. Fox Saturday Baseball presented by Direct TV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you got to get Direct TV and sponsored by Taco Bell. Think outside the bun. And by Carfax, free at your used car dealer. Just say, show me the Carfax. Statue for Paul Revere and here this other landmark, Fenway Park. A fastball for a strike from Beckett. Angel Barroa leading it off. Trying to find some production out of the third base position in this lineup for the Yankees until a rod comes back and that date is continually getting pushed up. At least that's the word around the Yankees. They won't officially say it as Barroa grounds out to Mike Lowell one away here in the second inning. Originally they slated Alex Rodriguez for a May 15th return and now you hear maybe even a week earlier than that as he started to run the bases he's doing everything except sliding to this point. And he may get into games this week. Trying to rehab from that hip surgery here is Brett Gardner. And a strike from Beckett. I'm surprised that the Yankees have moved that up particularly in this day and age where teams if they err, they err on the side of caution. Well I would say the Yankees in their defense will say well we have we haven't officially moved up that timetable but they don't really fight it like they did even as recently as last week. Mm -hmm. when you start talking about Rodriguez they are very optimistic that he'll be back sooner rather than later is strike three gives Beckett his first strikeout of the afternoon and he caught Gardner looking for something other than a fastball. Now you get the idea that uh, when you're ahead things like that happen. He was ahead of Baroa got the ground out. He was ahead of Gardner got the strikeout. And now Jeter who grounded out to third and a good play by Lowell to his left his first time up. Two hundred thirty seven hits against Boston most by any active player. He's played in over 2000 games in his career overall and he has strike one here in the second. Four home runs in his first 59 at bats this season his best start power wise. Since 99. And he started this afternoon hitting 290. Derek turns 35 years old in two months and one day June 26th. What are you thinking about getting him. Huh. What are you thinking about getting him. <laughs> I thought that's what you asked. There's a two out base hit to center. <laughs> I mean according to Ben Affleck and other Red Sox fans you and I are big admirers of Derek so I think we should get him some <laughs> Major League Baseball and People Magazine are looking for individuals who have made a difference in their community. 
30 everyday all stars will be honored at the 2009 all star game in St. Louis to nominate go to peopleallstars.com. What do you get the man who has everything. Can't get him cologne he has some of his own. Five more years in the Yankee uniform I think that's what Derek Jeter would like. But the reason I brought that up is no team has won a World Series with a shortstop 35 years or older since the Brooklyn Dodgers did it in 1956 when Pee Wee Reese was their shortstop. Out of play strike two. Understand the New York Jets with the fifth pick just got a present traded up and got Mark Sanchez the quarterback out of USC. That is a big get for the New York Jets. And an exciting young player that scouts just rave about. Little light on experience but heavy on talent and he will be a jet. Here's an 0 2 pitch. Up and away from Beckett ball one. Beckett had a long first inning 36 pitches. He's thrown 10 so far here in the second inning. And he's one and two on Johnny Damon. Who singled and scored his first time up. Good breaking ball and a pop up right side shallow right center for Pedroia called off by Ellsbury. And we go to the bottom of the second. How about a snuggie? We could get Derek Jeter a snuggie for that upcoming birthday. <laughs> Fox Saturday Baseball presented by DirecTV is sponsored by Budweiser. Reach for the perfect balance of flavor and refreshment. Budweiser, the great American lager. We move into the bottom of the second inning, and the Red Sox will have Kevin Euclid, J.D. Drew, and then Jason Bay. We talked earlier about no Manny Ramirez. Less production to this point from David Ortiz, and the Red Sox will try to ride Jason Bay. And this guy for sure the cleanup hitter who was off to a 433 start Kevin Euclid who just Tim seems to get better every year. It's better in the most unusual way I have never really seen a hitter hit exactly like Euclid but Kevin leads the American League in three different categories batting average slugging percentage on base percentage it starts that hand and the small of the bat in the back kind of leisurely brings it toward the other hand to the left side Baroa wide throw but out one away so Euclid grounds out and J.D. Drew who was bothered by a bad back at the start of spring training got an injection back there and is feeling pretty good ever since digs his way in hitting 265. Three homers seven RBIs and trying to get on in front of Jason Bay. A strike over the outside corner. Beckett is the 32 year old right hander rather Burnett. Signed a five year deal and is locked up by the Yankees through 2013. That skips in a ball and a strike. A.J. was drafted by the Mets actually in the eighth round back in 1995 was traded for Al Leiter in 98 came up with Florida in 99 and threw a no hitter for the Marlins in 2001 at San Diego a game that featured nine walks by his own admission he was more of just a thrower then and now more of a pitcher and a guy who has taught him or did teach him a lot about preparation and how to work effectively at this level is his former teammate Roy Halladay, the outstanding right hander for the Toronto Blue Jays. Here's a one two. Breaking ball is low. Two balls, two strikes. It looks like Ken Rosenthal, the Yankees, got a guy, didn't get the headlines that Sabathia got, but so far he's been a stopper for this New York club. Yes he has Joe and I spoke this week with his former pitching coach in Toronto Brad Arnsberg 
and he said the difference with A.J. now is that he has accepted that he is a power pitcher. Power pitchers walk people. Power pitchers occasionally hit batters. And Burnett has learned that, hey, that's going to happen in his last start against Cleveland. Seven walks, but he still produced a quality start. You want to read more from Ken Rosenthal? You can go to FoxSports.com. Here's a 2-2 pitch to Drew. That's low. A.J. is a guy who has toted around his extra baggage that label of a guy who gets hurt too much. Ten times on the D.L. went through Tommy John surgery earlier in his career. Three two pitch and a foul ball. Most pitchers cannot pitch around walks. But A.J. Burnett can. For instance, he can walk two guys in an inning, and they're not necessarily a sign that a team's going to score against him. He can get the strikeout. He can get the ground ball double play. Just overpowering stuff. That just missed in a one-out walk. Well, so far, Burnett has followed Chin Ming Wong to the mound. That's the way they were stacked by the Yankees and because Wong in his last two starts he was skipped and then eventually disabled yesterday on the DL Wong went one inning two starts ago an inning in a third last Saturday at home against Cleveland they've asked Burnett for not only a win but for a lot of innings and so far Burnett has given the Yankees exactly that and when you compare what Chin Ming Wong has done to the other starters. The rest of the group five and one and 13 starts decent ERA and Wong is bothered by and dis disabled for an issue in his hips here is Bay with a line drive into right well hit but right at Swisher he didn't move two out talk to Joe Girardi about Wong and he said I just feel like Wong forgot what it felt like to have a strong backside when he's throwing and strong legs which is vital to a pitcher's success injuring his foot uh, last June in Houston. So it uh, was about an eight month period where he did not compete didn't pitch last June to this March and the Yankees uh, do not think he has strength on that right side of his body and not only did he not pitch he didn't run no he did not work out his legs and that has led the Yankees believe to the decrease in his velocity and as Girardi said a guy who has suffered an issue in his spine and really ultimately was the end of his playing career he said you forget what it feels like to feel good and while Chin Ming Wong may contend that he's not hurt he's just not strong. Good pitch from A.J. Burnett strike two. That's a breaking ball unlike any right hander in the American League. With the possible exception of Gil Mesh of the Kansas City Royals. Drew on at first two out and a one two count. Oh. And again he just made a hot hitter look lost. No first, contest. First strikeout for A.J. Burnett. Gets around the walk. 2-0 New York after 2. Back after this from your local Fox station. You're watching Major League Baseball on Fox. Well, this season, fans can use Twitter to stay connected to Fox Baseball. Followers receive alerts to original video and columns posted at FoxSports.com, backstage photos, and insights from... Fox's baseball announcers as we tweet throughout the week. Follow us at twitter.com slash MLB on Fox. First pitch is a strike and now the next two to Shara is up and away a ball and a strike. Chris Rose who is here with us doing our pregame is tweeting which is the proper conjugation of the verb Twitter. As we speak, as the count goes up and away, two and one. Somebody was an English major at Indiana. Evidently. By the way, your caricature looks like. Uh, Man, that was terrible. Looks more like Pete Rose. Yeah, that was terrible. I, I need to go back to the art department for a second. I think. Maybe a combination of Pete Rose and Scott Boris. 
Up and away, three bank, balls and a strike. Bank account not as solid as either. No. No. By the way, I have to tweet. I have to keep guys like Sabathian, Damon, and Papelbon, all NFL fans. I have to keep them updated on uh, NFL picks. I bet you do. Yeah. And that's Rosenthal up in the top. Yeah, how's that looking? I don't know. That shot down the right field line and hooking foul. It's the way Bob Myers, our artist, sees Ken Rosenthal, who evidently, to Bob, looks a lot like Norman Fell from Three's Company. <laughs> or maybe Andy Williams. Tim, are you happy with your caricature on the tweet? I, uh, yes and no. Hmm. <laughs> what don't you like? We can have it changed. Cheeks <laughs> look rugged. Three balls, two strikes, two to Shara leading off, and a walk for the second time in this game. I don't know that rugged would be one of the descriptions that I would choose. Here's Nick Swisher. Nick with an RBI single his first time up. Swisher added to that 302 average and uh, Chris has done these great pieces Chris Rose before these games he did one last week with Orlando Hudson today with Jonathan Papelbon who is outstanding and fun to talk to and Swisher is the kind of guy that you could talk to every week. Runner on at first with nobody out and a ball drifts down and away. So Beckett who started to get ahead of hitters in the second and then eventually gave up a two out hit to Jeter got around it walked to Shera and falls behind on the count to Swisher. There's a good breaking ball from Beckett ball and a strike. Yankees coming off a four and two homestand they split with Cleveland won two games in a shortened series against the A's this homestand that was talked about for the home runs that were hit at the new facility as much as the scores were talked about is strike two is into Swisher one and two. Yes yeah, suitably the last game of that homestand was won by the Yankees. A two run shot by Melky Cabrera in the bottom of the 14th inning on Thursday. The counts one and two on Swisher to Shara on at first and Swisher out in front of that pitch still one and two. So the studies are ongoing they did. A win study and tried to. Go through the scenarios and mock up whatever they could to try and see how the ball would carry at the new Yankee Stadium. And now that they've got the six games under their belts, and we've heard people chime in from AccuWeather and people blogging and people from all corners of the earth about the way the ball carries at Yankee Stadium, that'll be a topic as we go through 2009, no doubt. Yankees tickled to death they could come to Fenway and play in a big ballpark. At least the pitching staff. Last night it was Jason Bay's home run the tight end that we've talked about a couple of times already and he took it out into left center field and got it over the top of the monster to tie the game and then Kevin Euclid hit a blast against Marte to win it in the 11th. Another one two pitch to Nick Swisher and a strikeout for Beckett his second of the game. One on one out. Last two innings Beckett has corralled that curveball. That is a wicked tightly wrapped curve to get Swisher. And so strikeout number two as they hang another K and the batter will be Cano. This is a New York Yankees lineup that has nobody in the top 10 in the American League in any of the major hitting categories. Cano may be the closest to it. 
starting the day at 354 as he's out in front of this ball down the right field line it's gone two run home run for Robinson Cano it's the pesky pole in right and it's four to nothing New York here in the third we talked about the tightly wrapped breaking ball to Swisher you talk about a guy who waited and went down and got a good curve ball on the inside part of the plate but Cano waiting to the last minute flicks those wrists and takes Beckett deep that's not a bad curve ball to be hit that far and Cano just loves to hit here at Fenway Park a 351 career hitter best among active players in the big leagues and that's his sixth home run here at Fenway and a breaking ball is at the back foot of Posada ball one and there's the reaction of Beckett who had trouble with the home run ball in his first year with the Boston Red Sox that has calmed down the last couple and a strike is into Posada one and one. With one out, nobody on. The next two, Posada, ball two, two and one. First year with the Red Sox, Beckett allowed 36 home runs. That's hard to believe for a guy with as good a stuff as Josh Beckett has. That was back in 06. He's allowed 36 total since then, in the last two plus years. And that's up the middle, a sharply hit base hit to center by Posada. One on, one out. And now Matsui. So for two guys who were teammates with the Marlins and good friends hooking up here this afternoon, Beckett and Burnett. So far, A.J. Burnett is having all the fun up four to nothing, and he's allowed one hit, one walk, and struck out one. Beckett, meanwhile, has allowed four runs on six hits. Here's Matsui. There's ball one. We'll be talking to Joe Girardi during the next break and eventually talk to Terry Francona. As our afternoon wears on here at Fenway, we're in the third and the Yankees have doubled their lead. To the right side, Pedroia goes to second on to first, not in time. So they get the one on the force out four six and the throw by Nick Green back across was too late to turn two. Hideki Matsui back in 2002 hit 50 home runs for the Yamiuri Giants in Tokyo. He came to the United States the next year with a lot of uh, celebrity hugely popular in Japan and the biggest problem he had was with the two seam fastball in 2003. That ground ball, the second base, he just could not master it until about August of that year and has done well, but he's fallen back into that two seam fastball out making machine this year. There's Baroa takes a strike. They don't throw a two seam fastball uh, in Japan. Pitchers are used to throwing cross seam fastballs, balls that have a tendency to go up and not balls that tail away from from left handed batters. Fooled was Barola in the count 0 and 2. On Hel Barola added to the roster for the Yankees today. Cody Ransom pulled his quad, his right quad last night. He went on the disabled list and Barola added to the roster and starting today at third base. 0 for 1. Bounced out to third his first time, and that ball smothered by Veritek. Well, you might say, uh, well, Ichiro Suzuki, the, the brilliant outfielder of the Seattle Mariners, came over here and coped with the two seam fastball. But Ichiro had the speed to get the infield hits with that. Uh, Deki Matsui doesn't have the speed and never has had a lot of speed. So it's a lot more difficult for him coping with that pitch. 
Here's a little flare into right. That ball's going to fall for a base hit. Matsui will keep going to third. First and third with two out on a base hit to right by Baroa. So bad knees and all. Matsui hustled down the line to avoid the double play. And now after the hit by Baroa, the Yankees have first and third, two out, and a chance for more. And another speed guy digs in. That's Brett Gardner. See another speed guy really the only real speed guy in this lineup for the Yankees and the main reason why he is the starting center fielder for Joe Girardi. Beckett's already up to 70 pitches for his day. Strike one. This is for the most part a station to station type lineup for Joe Girardi. And what Gardner brings is a change in defense. He makes infielders move around and he can put pressure on infielders with the kind of speed he has as he takes strike two. It's always tougher to retire that third out when you have a speed guy at the plate and a runner on at third base. Because of the danger of the infield hit, much greater with Gardner than any of the other Yankees. Here's an 0 2. And a ground ball up the middle. Pedroia flips for the out, and that's it for New York. A leadoff walk to Teixeira with one out. Robinson Cano hit a curveball off the pole in right. 4 0 New York after two and a half. We continue on here at Fenway Park and now in the bottom of the third it's 4 nothing New York after the two run home run by Robinson Cano. His hot start continues and Jason Veritek takes a strike from A.J. Burnett. Did not know if last year was going to be the final year. Seeing Jason Veritek in a Boston Red Sox uniform a slow roller Burnett makes the play one out and it gives us a chance to play our interview with Joe Girardi during the break. And the first question was about his team getting up off the deck and responding here early after a tough loss here last night. Nice. Yeah, I mean, it's a tough loss, but you know you're going to go through games like this during the course of the season. We've already had a couple and we've been able to bounce back. I mean, we had a tough one the first night we were in Tampa and we were able to take two out of three there. And we've had to get up a couple times and our guys have responded. And, and the guy on the mound, A.J. Burnett, I mean, if you're going to respond behind somebody, the way you guys have come out of the gate, this is the guy that you're responding behind. You know, he's been a big part of that. It seems that every time that we need some distance out of our starter and we need a win, he's been on the mound so far for us, and he's been really good for us. And he does it so effortlessly. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm just amazed at how the ball comes out of his hand. You never see him, like, overthrow. And even when you just watch him play catch, the ball jumps out of his hand. All right, Talladega is tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. If you had to pick one driver who you think has the best shot of winning, who is it? You know, I'm going to go with Jeff Gordon. And the other thing I'd like to do is I'd like to wish my beautiful wife of 19 years, Kim, a happy birthday. All right, outstanding. Right. Happy birthday, Kim, and thanks for your time, Joe. Thanks, guys. All right. Joe Girardi in his second year with the New York Yankees. Last year, a third-place finish, and he's had to deal with a lot already here in 2009. So far the Yankees off to a nine and seven start. Tomorrow it is a one o'clock start. The Talladega Super Speedway race right here on Fox. There you go NASCAR Sprint Cup racing from Talladega tomorrow one Eastern 10 a.m. Pacific. And Joe Girardi is in a pool with a couple of the trainers and staff for the Yankees. Gene Monahan is the ringleader of that. They have a news and notes sheet that's printed out every week with statistical information and a trophy that they hand out at the end of the year for their own points leader. Girardi possesses that trophy. Here is a 2 0. That's in the dirt. 3 0 now. With two out and nobody on. Speaking of statistical information, I would like to correct something I said a couple of innings ago about 
the 35 year old or older shortstop that last won a World Series. That was in 1955 and not 1956. Burnett's next is grounded foul outside third. Ellsbury fly to left his first time up. And so far Burnett has been in complete control. A slow tapper, first base side foul. You can say the same for the guy going tomorrow. That's Andy Pettit. 2 0 oh so far for the Yankees, and an interesting matchup with Justin Masterson, who's been taken out of the bullpen with the injury to Matsuzaka. Dice K is trying to build up his arm strength. And Masterson came out of the bullpen. Matsuzaka went just an inning in his last start really picked up his mates out in the pen then went five and a third for a win over Baltimore on Monday and Terry Francona and he's a guy who's a candidate to stay in that rotation but could do any of it here's a little pop up on the right side Cano is there Cano is homered in this game it's four nothing New York as we go into the fourth Jeter will lead it off for New York when we return to Fenway. Fox Saturday Baseball presented by DirecTV sponsored by Valspar Paint Valspar the beauty goes on by Applebee's it's a whole new neighborhood. And by Hyundai, Assurance Plus, because in times like these, we're all in this together. Fourth inning rolls in at Fenway, top of the order for New York, and that means Jeter, Damon, and Teixeira strike one on Jeter. On 0 and 1, Jeter takes ball one. 210 home runs now for Jeter in a Yankee uniform, number 10 on the Yankee all time list. The 1 1 pitch is slapped foul out of play, strike two. At last swing, however, that's Jeter's stroke. That inside out, base hit stroke to right field, right center. Great two strike hitter. Went a lot of home runs that way. He'll he'll occasionally eke one over that right field wall, whether the old stadium or the new one. A one-two is lined up the middle. Similar swing, good result for Jeter. He's two for three. Now a Direct TV game break. Follow your favorite MLB team no matter where you live with Direct TV. Chipper Jones takes Bronson Arroyo deep with two on and two out. Homer number two of the season for Chipper Jones. Six to nothing. Braves in a final of 10-2 and a win at Cincinnati. Chipper Jones is the guy who's been with his team the longest. He's been with the Braves for 16 years and then you've got a trio of Yankees that have been with their pinstripes for 15 years. Here's a fly ball into right off the bat of Johnny Damon one on one out. And Mark Teixeira in his first year in that Yankee uniform digs in how close Ken Rosenthal did the Boston Red Sox come to landing Mark Teixeira. Fairly close, Joe. They could have signed him if they had gone to 176 million over eight years, then added two options to bring the total payout to over 200 million over 10 years. Now, in the end, they just decided that would not have been a very sensible decision. But the reason they wanted to share it is because he was a young guy, relatively speaking, an all around player, a switch hitter with power, gold glove defender at first. There's another free agent coming up not this year but the next year who also fits that description and that would be twins catcher Joe Maurer after 2010 
he could hit the market at age 27. Meanwhile if the Red Sox picked up to Shera, then that would have moved Euclid over to third base and what would that have meant Ken Rosenthal for Mike Lowell. Here goes Jeter and Veritek couldn't get a handle on it still almost threw him out but it's a stolen base third of the year for Jeter he's there with one out. Joe they would have traded Lowell under those circumstances and of course that did not sit too well with Mike Lowell who had signed a three year deal with them. He had turned down a four year deal with the Phillies to stay in Boston and yet here he was potentially on his way out. And he has really rewarded the Red Sox for at least staying with him. They didn't end up making that deal stretching out farther to get to Shera and Lowell's off to a great start coming off the hip injury and surgery and the count now two and one on to Yeah, It has less to do with to and more to do with Mike Lowell and Kevin Euclid who as we said uh, is leading the American League in three offensive categories. Here's a two one to Shera takes a strike. Two balls two strikes and to Shera who is slowed by tendonitis in his left wrist. Well he's hit three home runs his average 240 really hasn't hit the ball with much authority so far here in 09. Still trying to get right. But when he's in a groove he's as good as you'll find and may walk for the third time in three plate appearances as that one misses it's a full count. Beckett will not pitch deep into this ball game at this pace as he walks to Shera for the third time in this game. And it's two on with one out and Nick Swisher coming up. That was an odd delivery by Beckett. It was almost as though he used a slide step and in that situation three and two with Jeter on at second base. Uh, I'm, that said that is not the normal leg kick of Josh Beckett. Normally he has a a higher leg kick but that was a strange stride toward home to walk. was frozen looking back and forth at Jeter at second. That was the type of situation where Beckett threw at Bobby Abreu of the Angels where he looked back at second looked back looked back Abreu stepped out and that was that ball up and in the incident for which he was suspended for five days. There's strike three over the inside corner tailing pitch Swisher didn't like it strikeout number three for Beckett two out. Arms up fastball. Greg Maddox made this pitch as famous as any pitcher who's ever played the game. Arms go up, the ball goes under for strike three. And now Robinson Cano with runners on at first and second, two out. Game number two of 18 this season between Boston and New York. And the Red Sox who got off to that two and six start have won eight in a row. Trail here by four this afternoon ball one. How evenly have these games been since 2004 101 meetings the Yankees have won 51 of them the Red Sox have won 50. They've split the 48 played here at Fenway. Here's a fly ball into left field sending Bay back at the wall. This ball is off the monster. 
One run scores. Here comes to Shera. Two more runs for New York and a six to nothing fourth inning lead. Cano with four RBIs as he adds a two run double here in the fourth. This is a fastball up and away. Sometimes if you're a hitter and you hit a, a breaking ball out of the ballpark as Cano did his last time up you can gauge what kind of pitch you're going to get from a from a pitcher the next time up. Cano got two fastballs and that last fastball he hits off the monster in left field. Hitting instructors love to see a guy pull a ball down the line and then get a base hit the other way the next time up. Here's a strike to Posada. He's two for two with an RBI. Cano now at second with two out and this has been a disappointing start for Josh Beckett. Came in two and one trailing here six to nothing in the fourth. And just does not look all that sharp one ball one strike. Beckett with a count of one and one. Posada takes a fastball strike two. Hideki Matsui would be next if Posada keeps this inning alive. A.J. Burnett meanwhile on the other side has been coasting. He's faced only one over the minimum through three. Here's a one two and a breaking ball is looped into left right at bay. To end the inning. A big day for Robinson Cano. He's hit a two run homer now a two run two out double to left six nothing New York after three and a half. A.J. Burnett now has a six nothing lead. As he attempts to up his record to three and oh he's faced as I mentioned only one over the minimum he's walked one allowed a hit had a double play turn behind him here is Pedroia and Dustin looks at ball one Pedroia made a great diving stop to his right last night in the 10th inning to rob Derek Jeter. Of an RBI single that would have given the Yankees the lead again, and it was a fast friendship that was formed between Pedroia and Jeter during the World Baseball Classic. Here's a 1 1. That's in at the knees, strike two. After Pedroia it'll be Ortiz and Euclid and the Red Sox trying to get something going just to jump back into this game. Blocked by Posada two balls two strikes. You talk about two guys Derek Jeter and Dustin Pedroia two guys who keep their noses clean and their uniforms dirty. That's a good combination. Great representatives of these two franchises and this rivalry 2 2 pitch. Still 2 and 2. Burnett coming off a career year last year with Toronto career high 18 wins. Career high 221 innings pitched. Led the American League in strikeouts with a career high 231. Opted out of his deal. Signed a free agent contract, a five year deal with New York. That's up and away. And a full count. On three and two Pedroia takes a walk good at bat by Dustin Pedroia. It's 
go for a game break and check in with right here at Fenway Chris Rose. All right Joe uh, Elijah Dukes this week find 500 bucks for being late to a Nats game because he was at a little league game. Well here he looks like a little leaguer against the Mets allowing two runs to score. New York wins at eight to two. Nats are a big league worst three and 13. And remember to watch your favorite out of town team on direct TV. Joe. All right, Chris, thank you. One on, nobody out. And here is David Ortiz, eight RBIs on the season. And getting tired of hearing questions about his lack of production. You talk to Terry Francona, he'll tell you that David Ortiz is between everything. He's out in front of the off speed stuff, the breaking balls, and he's behind fastballs. And he really wants to see him go the other way with authority. He said if he goes the other way with something on it, makes good contact, and can drive the ball to left, good things are happening. There's Dave Maggot in the hitting coach for Terry Francona. 0 1 pitch. Check on Pedroia. We've talked about that many times. Uh, the worst thing for a hitter to be is to be in between. The two elements of hitting that are most important waiting. And having quick hands. Here is a pop up. Foul territory might be a play and a good play by Posada. A long run to get there, and that's out number one here in the fourth. That was an example of what uh, Terry was talking about right there, Joe. David Ortiz takes the breaking ball. And then he's behind on the fastball. So again, and at bat where David Ortiz was caught in between. Here's Euclid. Grounded out to third his first time up, and the frustration continues, and it's written all over the face and in the body language of Big Poppy. Yep. One on one out in Euclid. Bending out of the way of a breaking ball. It's strike one. Here are those two pitches, or we will have those two pitches. Here they are. The first pitch was a curveball. Knees buckle. Second pitch, a fastball, a good fastball, but big poppy behind it. And a frustrating at bat continues. Here's the 0 1. Skips in there, and Posada, good job to block it. Ball one. It is a warm day here in Boston. We're talking about maybe record highs for April 25th. But it might get up to 85. It was 83 at the start of this game and down on the field. It was warm in the sunshine and the sun is now starting to be less of a factor in both the pitching mound and the home plate area in the shade. Here's a 1 1 down and away. Maybe April is not the cruelest month. This is a gorgeous day here in New England. And it hasn't been for the at bats for Euclid. There's been a lot of good hitters across baseball this April with the cold temperatures who have really struggled. Euclid is on the other list. The 2 1. And he adds another. Just hitting lasers all over the place. Two on with one out. And the Red Sox hope that that's the start of something here in the fourth. Familiar sound since coming up to the big leagues and you talk about a guy who works intelligently and diligently at his craft. That's Kevin Euclid. But was quoted recently as saying you know in the past I've stressed too much about at bats about games and I'm trying to relax and have more fun and. It's something if there is anything he's been criticized has been that he's been a little too intense a little too ready to knock over a cooler in the dugout and he's trying to take some of that edge off. Boy, is he hot. Two on, one out, and Drew out in front of that pitch from Burnett. Looked like a straight changeup to J.D. J. D. Drew. Yeah, a lot of that, that tempering your personality comes with confidence and maturity. Fastball high, ball one. Hit. Hit. 
You look at this Yankee rotation Burnett Pettit have led the way Sabathia has had one real good start. He's had trouble pitching deep in the game so far as a Yankee. That's a strike. Wong is on the disabled list. Phil Hughes is waiting in the wings and probably will get the ball on Tuesday night. At Detroit he's three and zero at triple A Scranton with an ERA of one point eight six. On one and two that just missed two and two. The other guy that's on that list of pitchers in the rotation is Jabba Chamberlain. Who worked here last night got into the sixth went only five and a third allowed two runs on nine hits and had four double plays turned behind him. Here's a two two breaking ball misses Burnett is frustrated didn't get either of the last two and it's a full count. Now Burnett forced into a situation where he has to throw a fastball predictable pitch to Drew with good power one swing could put the Red Sox right back in this game. That's ball four to load him up. That's a bad pitch. That's a bad selection right there. Three straight breaking balls to J.D. Drew on a one two 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 and three two count with a six run lead. That's that last breaking ball that stays away. He did not get the one two 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 calls in that three two pitch outside. And now Bay who was a hero last night one on two out ninth inning Mariana Rivera. Give up. Tied it at four. Euclid's won it in the 11th with his fifth home run of the season. Off Marte. Bases loaded for Jason Bay. Strike one. That is a body language shown by Mariano Rivera that you don't often see. Yankee fans don't often see. A game tying home run in the ninth inning. It's Fisk esque. Yeah, yeah. Hoping for the opposite. Here's an 0 1 pitch outside, one ball, one strike. Last night, Rivera hoping that that ball hit high off the Green Monster, stayed in the park. Instead, it got over. Here's a 1 1 to Bay. Hard hit, base hit, left field. One run scores. Euclid stopped at third as Damon dropped it. The bases remain loaded. It's 6 to 1. Now, Johnny Damon does not have a strong throwing arm, but keep in mind you're trailing by five runs. So once Euclid is stopped by DeMarlo Hale at third base, Hale started waving the arm. It was too late. As Euclid looked back, he didn't see him. Now he looks back at Damon and doesn't see Hale. But with the five run lead, you really can't take a chance with one out there. And in any third base coach is not only looking at the situation in front of him, the scoreboard, but also who's coming up. Knowing who's up next, Mike Lowell, who has been red hot. Has an eight game hitting streak. He's been hitting 455 during those eight games. Tied for seventh in the American League with his 16 RBIs. And here he is with the bases loaded in a five run game, only one out. Strike one from Burnett. The only out in this inning a foul out by David Ortiz two walks two hits a 
Another good breaking ball from Burnett. It's 0 and 2. Bowles struck out on breaking balls his first time up, and now he can't pull the trigger. Might have been a wasted fastball up and away in the count one and two. That's exactly what it was. He'll come back with a breaking ball, one would suspect. Josh Beckett hoping for help. ball to strike out Lowell two away and Lowell has looked lost against this pitch from A.J. Burnett that's the advantage of staying ahead when you're ahead in the count you'll get hitters to swing at pitches like that now Jason Veritek who grounded out his first time up last year hit just 220. 13 home runs, 43 RBIs. His deal was up, signed a one year deal with dual options for next year. But they brought their captain back. Two grand slams on his resume, bases loaded, two out. And a shot into right. Well hit at the wall. Grand slam. Remember when it was still a shutout, the 3 2 curveball that JD drew. He lost him, and that set up this. First, a strike on a swing by Nick Green, and here it is. Fastball, first pitch, grand slam, socks back in it. And for Boston, their first grand slam since Dustin Pedroia. Did it against the Yankees last August 27th. Strike two on Green. One swing of the bat, and Jason Veritek double his RBI put output for the year. He had four before that swing, eight after it. A strikeout ends the inning. Big damage is done by Boston. Their captain brought him back into the ball game on a Saturday at Fenway. Grand Slam Red Sox. 6-5 New York after four. Hideki Matsui first up, first pitch swinging and strike one on a foul off to the left. Matsui is 0 for 2, Baroa then Gardner. And it's a 6-5 game. It was 6 to nothing with A.J. Burnett rolling and a two-out grand slam by Jason Veritek. Got this crowd buzzing. One ball, one strike. Here's a 1 1. Low, two balls and a strike.
Now Manny Del Carmen the hard throwing right hander is off to a great start this season is getting loose in the bullpen a bullpen that's been outstanding for the Red Sox during this eight game winning streak. To the right side Pedroia to his left one out here's our visit with Terry Francona Red Sox manager. We talked to him about that one swing of the bat by Veritek bringing his ball club back into this game. Yeah, Jace uh, got us back into it now, I and mean, we got a long way to go. But at least we, you know, at least we got a fighting chance now. That was uh, wasn't looking too good for a while there. What have we seen from Josh Beckett so far here today? You know, guys, I think if anything, I think he came out too strong. Uh, you know, he had the extra couple of days, uh, good velocity, good life on his fastball. But as we've seen the last two nights, they will not expand the strike zone, and, and they make you throw strikes, and then he's paid for it a few times. I would imagine every time the Yankees leave town or you guys leave New York, there's some rest to be had for Terry <laughs> Francona. These these games are draining, aren't they? Well, I think the players more than me, but yeah, they're 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 long, and I think we beat up on each other a lot. We appreciate your time. Thanks, Terry. Okay, guys. It's Terry Francona. Who is in his sixth year here now with the Red Sox as Barroa lines one into the sunshine and right at Euclid's two out. Frank. I think if the score, excuse me, Joe, was still six to nothing, I think Josh Beckett would be gone from the game and he wouldn't even start the top of the fifth. But since the Red Sox scored five runs as a reward to perhaps get him a win. I think that's the reason uh, Beckett was sent back out there. Trying to get through the five to qualify and then see what happens in the bottom of the inning when the Red Sox will have the top of their lineup against A.J. Burnett. Here's Gardner. Shows Bunt takes a strike. This could be one of the more efficient innings. And maybe the only perfect inning by Beckett in this game. He's not retired the side in order yet. The 0 1 to Gardner, the number nine hitter, and that's in for a strike 0 and 2. <laughs> 101 pitches on the day for Beckett. Here's his 0 2. Still good jump and life to that fastball, ball one. You almost feel uh, or sense uh, Beckett feeling that change in momentum with that five run fourth by the Red Sox. Gardner hits one into center a little stagger at the start by Ellsbury but the first perfect inning by Beckett halfway through it at Fenway bottom of the fifth top of the order for Boston down by one. Fox Saturday Baseball presented by DirecTV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you got to get DirecTV. Beautiful day, Fenway Park here in Boston. And a good game now. Six to nothing is now six five. Yankees got two in the first, two in the third, two in the fourth. And the Red Sox got five, capped on a grand slam by Veritek. Top of the order for Boston. Here's Ellsbury 0 for 2. Ball one high. Pedroia will follow and then David Ortiz. On 1 and 0. That's down and away. 2 and 0. Burnett has walked 3, struck out 3. And allowed five runs on four hits. Two and one. Last time the Yankees lost. A lead of six or more runs to the Red Sox and lost the game was mid May 1968. Man, how about that. Here's a shot into right. This game is tied.
And so the Yankees who last night watched as Mariano Rivera blew a save in the ninth inning with two out lost the game in the 11th have now seen a six to nothing lead evaporate and the go ahead run is on with nobody out here in the fifth. Pedroia with a base hit on base for the third time this afternoon and back to the home run ahead in the count and in Ellsbury gets the fastball to tie it for the Sox first of the year for Jacoby Ellsbury and right into the Yankee bullpen which is now getting busy. Here's Ortiz. 0 for 2. Hitting just 209. Out in front of that pitch strike one. Here's the Hyundai in-game box score for Boston. Introducing the all-new 306 horsepower real wheel drive Hyundai Genesis Coupe. Ellsbury with the shot that just tied it. Pedroia has been on base three times with two hits and a walk. Ortiz not in on the fun. The big one. The number eight hitter Veritek with a two out grand slam last inning to make it 6 5. It's now 6 6. Jose Veras getting loose for New York. Joe, in a sense, uh, the Red Sox can take solace in, in the fact that uh, David Ortiz hasn't been hitting, and yet they've won eight in a row. I mean, here's a team that started out two and six on the year. Part of the formula over the eight game winning streak, not just big hits by Euclid and Bay and Pedroia doing his thing, Lowell, but a very diverse bullpen. All featuring different out pitches that's been assembled by Boston and during this streak the ERA has been very tiny only four runs allowed for the Red Sox bullpen over the last thirty three and a third and at some point here this afternoon Terry Francona will have to dip back into that group out there beyond the wall. Three left handers, five right handers, a very strong bullpen. Two and one on David Ortiz. Now three and one. Now the fastball count almost like third and long in football. You know you're going to pass. Well Ortiz knows he's going to get the fastball. Can he do anything with it. The opposite way back toward the wall and off the green monster. Pedroia will hold it third. It's a double for Ortiz. Second and third, nobody out for Euclid. When Ortiz is hitting well, he is peppering the monster as he did then. And now a visit from Dave Island the pitching coach for A.J. Burnett who was dominant through the first three innings. And he has not just lost the lead he's been hit rather hard the last inning plus. Has never lost to the Red Sox three and oh here at Fenway. With an ERA of point four but a different story here today. Yeah the Sox have capitalized on. The fastball knowing it was coming. Jason Veritek guessing fastball with the bases loaded. Two out grand slam and then to tie at Ellsbury on a 2 1 fastball. Here's Euclid again in another key spot for Boston. Second and third tie game. This is where Burnett will 
Try and rear back and find his best stuff. He needs a strikeout. Pedroia at third, David Ortiz at second. Euclid's checked his swing. One and one. I was just thinking, uh, even with his success, he has thrown three wild pitches at breaking ball, often in the dirt. Good play by Posada to prevent the Red Sox from taking the lead for the first time in this game. Ball two. Euclid with a hit, a run scored. He's grounded out. The best average in baseball. Five home runs, 13 RBIs. Drew hits behind him. On the inside corner, good pitch, two and two. Good fastball from Burnett. Burnett has three strikeouts. And he hits Euclid to load him up. Of all things, coming inside with the fastball, hitting Euclid on the left leg. And now the bases are loaded for J.D. Drew. Drew has walked twice against Burnett. Out in front of that pitch, and the foul tip caught Posada. It's 0 1. Now, in last night's ball game, the Yankees had a 4 2 lead in the top of the ninth inning. They had the bases loaded, nobody out. And the Red Sox got out of it with no runs. Robinson could no hit into. A 4 2 3 double play. And the Yankees are hopeful that the Red Sox return the favor today. Nine of the last Red Sox hitters have reached base. Nine of the last 12. And with the bases loaded, still nobody out. A visit from Posada to A.J. Burnett. Talked about how close this series has been combining regular season and postseason since 2004. 51 to 50. And the wins department and the runs relatively close. Split even 24 wins, 24 losses for the Red Sox here at home. Ground ball to Teixeira. To home for one, to first, double play. And a big 3 2 3 double play turned by the Yankees. <laughs> Deja vu. Last night it was the Red Sox who turned the double play, the 4 2 3 double play, and now a 3 2 3. The key on that was a strong throw home by Teixeira, and that allowed Posada to complete the play. So now second and third for Jason Bay, who had an RBI hit his last time up. He's had a couple of good swings against Burnett in this game. Made it out his first time on a line drive to right. Strike one. Burnett now just fighting to keep it tied. Good block by Posada. One ball, one strike. Yeah, that's that breaking ball in the dirt we were talking about. But you know on that double play, Joe, the only guy in the infield that could have gone home with the ball was the guy that it was hit to. And that was Mark Teixeira, who was the only infielder 
for the Yankees playing in. Here's a 1 1 to Bay. He went around, strike two. So now Burnett is one strike away from getting out of this. He allowed the leadoff home run by Ellsbury to tie it. A hit to Pedroia, a double by Ortiz, high off the wall and left. Hit Kevin Euclid to load him up. But a double play ball off the bat of J.D. Drew, and now a 1 2 count on Jason Bay. Shot into left center field. Back is Gardner. He will watch it hit high off the wall. Two runs driven in. Bay has made it 8 6 Boston. That should be all for Burnett. A breaking ball. It just hangs in the middle of the plate. It was down, but a real hanger. Nope, still in there. Lowell now with Bay at second, two out. A three run inning for Boston and a tailing fastball for strike one. Lowell has struck out twice and really had a tough time with the curveballs from A.J. Burnett. Fastball and a line drive into right. Swisher is there to end the inning. Hard hit, but the final out. And we go to the sixth. Three more for Boston, who trailed 6 0. They lead it 8 6. Fox Saturday Baseball presented by DirecTV is sponsored by AT&T, your world delivered. By Napa Auto Parts, Napa, get the good stuff. And by Bank of America, show the world it's not like it's love. Get MLB banking only from Bank of America. This game gets into the sixth inning and the way it started into the bottom of the fourth inning, you would be shocked if you've been flipping around. Looking at other things, if you're just getting back to this game, be surprised to see Boston's on top 8 6, especially with the way A.J. Burnett was working early in this game. He looked like he was going to be tough just to get hits against, let alone runs, and he ends up going. It appears he's finished. Five innings, eight runs, eight hits. I'm surprised Josh Beckett is still out there. 104 pitches. Now he has the win if he leaves. One ball one strike talking to Terry Francona before the game he said our bullpen's in good shape everybody's pretty well rested even with the 11 inning game last night. Del Carmen's been up twice now. They had the left hander Hunter Jones up earlier. But it's still Beckett. Who now leads by two. Top of the order for New York and the count two and one on Jeter who is two for three. Damon next and then to Shera. The 2 1. Drives Jeter off the plate to the delight of the fans here at Fenway, but a 3 1 count. Still life to that fastball for Beckett. That's foul, a full count. Yeah. 
Jeter trying to restart the Yankee offense. Starts it with a walk. And for Beckett, walk number four. Next week on Fox, don't miss it as the Mets head south down the turnpike to take on the world champs, the Philadelphia Phillies. Mets and Phils next Saturday in high def, only on Fox. On the air, 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific. And even after the leadoff walk, Beckett is still in the ballgame. And I'm more surprised. Here's Damon. And a strike. I, th I think the point here, it, you know, Terry Francona left Beckett in to throw the top of the fifth inning to reward him in case the Red Sox came back. They came back. And now Josh is still out there. So you know if the pitch counts around 85 or something like that you could understand it. But since it's around 100 the bullpen's been doing so well. I think you take him out here. A check on Jeter who has a decent sized lead. And a count on one on Damon. We heard in the interview we had with Frank Kona that he thought Beckett came out of the gate a little too strong after the layoff. A couple of extra days and now here he is at 110 pitches in his fourth start of the year. The 0 1 to Damon. One ball one strike. Jeter on at first talking to Euclid's teammates for the United States and the WBC. Here's a 1 1 to Damon. I have to admit when the Yankees signed Johnny Damon to a four year deal that extends through this year at the time I thought it was too long of a contract for a guy who looked to be fading and when you look at his numbers in his four years with the Yankees they are right there and compare very well to his time with the Boston Red Sox and here he is starting the day hitting 315 still has some pop actually has hit more home runs per year as a Yankee than he did with the Red Sox. Four years with Boston, hit 295. He's been a 287 hitter with New York. On base percentage is about dead even. And at bats per RBI is right there. One every 8.3 at bats with Boston, one every 7.9 at bats with the Yankees. He has maintained that level. 35 years old, and he's up on the count here, three and one. Well, that reward and that faith that Terry Francona has shown and given to Josh Beckett for what has been a long day may have extended a little long. And after a leadoff walk, the counts three and one on Damon, who is the tying run at the plate. And a strike. Hang on to the bat, Johnny. It's a full count. Never say one pitch could be a, a game turning pitch but the Red Sox got the call there Johnny Damon did not a, agree with it he thought it was outside. Back it needs another strike Damon. Wants to crack one. Full count and a foul. This Monday, you can try a free piece of the new Kentucky grilled chicken, marinated and grilled to perfection for that five star fall off the bone taste. Taste the unfried side of KFC. Fastball inside. And Damon hits one in the air to right. Back is Drew at the wall, and this game is tied again. Johnny Damon goes deep, and it's 8 8 in the sixth. Now there's no reward. So Beckett, who got a reprieve because of what his teammates did in the bottom of the fourth and the bottom of the fifth 
went back out for the top of the sixth with a two run lead. And Veritek first called outside then inside and here's what Damon did with it. So Beckett can't hang on to a two run lead. What a game. It's just another day at Fenway folks. <laughs> we got plenty more to come. Top of the sixth. Tied at eight. Del Carmen coming in. Well here's Manny Del Carmen taking over. Mark Teixeira at the plate. Nobody on or out. Two runs home for New York in an 8-8 game. Del Carmen has gone nine and a third innings not allowing a run so far in seven games part of a very good bullpen for Boston. Red Sox do miss the presence of Justin Masterson out there. He will get the ball again his second start tomorrow night. And the former Boston Red Sox outfielder Johnny Damon just tied it with a two run shot off Beckett. And while we came in talking about the great pitching of two good right handers Beckett and Burnett they both go five. Back at five plus and allow eight runs each. Strike three called on to Shera, one out in the sixth. And a good start for Manny Del Carmen. To Shera knew it. He was fooled by the pitch, and here is Nick Swisher, who's one for three. This becomes a battle of the two bullpens and going in the Boston Red Sox have the advantage in that matchup. Mentioned four earned runs allowed over the last 33 and now two thirds innings pitched by the bullpen ball one inside to Swisher. Joe you mentioned something uh, last inning talking about the different looks of the Red Sox uh, guys in the bullpen. You got different looks from uh, the left handed pitchers down there three left handers four right handers and Del Carmen uh, a guy who could uh, uh, many think and I do. I think he could be a stopper for a lot of teams. Certainly got electric stuff. He's got that overpowering fastball. That's down toward the left field corner. Fair ball off the bat of Swisher and an easy double with one out here in the sixth. And there's the go ahead run for New York. Swisher, his second hit, he's two for four in this game. What a lift he's given this Yankees team especially after they lost Xavier Nady for at least six weeks as he tries to rehab a partial tear in his right elbow. Two outfielders that are of such help to the Yankees now Nick Swisher and Melky Cabrera. Just two weeks ago when the Yankees broke camp two and a half weeks ago they didn't think that Swisher and Cabrera would pay such dividends early in the season. They also weren't sure that Alex Rodriguez would be ready to come back at the very latest mid May. Mm -hmm. All things continue. In the path that they're on and this Yankee team is biding time until. One of the best players in the game comes back as a good pitch in on the hands of Cano is fouled out of play. There's a big weapon missing down in that bullpen for the Yankees though and remember that as we get into the late innings and that person is Brian Bruni put on the disabled list with a bad elbow and last night Rivera. Through more than an inning. So the Yankees are a little short down there as they play on Saturday an early part of the season here in 09 as strike two is by the bat of Robinson Cano it's 0 2. Al Baladejo pitched well last night David Robertson is down there just called up. Mark Melanson who is a big time prospect. 
is a rookie and could make his debut at some point this weekend here in Boston. Steven Jackson. These are the names that are in the bullpen now for New York. That's high. Ball one. As opposed to the much more experienced Boston bullpen. Guys like Okajima and Javier Lopez. Saito, who was the mm -hmm. closer for the Dodgers, features a great slider. Papelbon is ready to pitch today if needed. Here's a one two. Left side for Lowell on a high hop, a long throw, and out as Euclid came off the bag to make the tag. Two away. Good play by Kevin Euclid on the tag. Two excellent right handed throwing first baseman in this game today Mark Teixeira of the Yankees and Kevin Euclid of the Red Sox. Here's Posada. Jorge Posada, two for three, an RBI single his first time up. Line to left his last time, now dealing with Manny Del Carmen. Red Sox in the bottom of the sixth will have Veritech, Nick Green, and then Jacoby Ellsbury. Eight, nine, and one against Jose Veras, who will take over for Burnett. Ball one. Swisher doubled with one out. He's at second with two out. Two and zero. Oh, the Hyundai in-game box score for the Yankees: the all-new 306 horsepower, real-wheel drive Hyundai Genesis Coupe. Jeter, a couple of hits, two runs. Big home run by Damon in this inning to tie it. A two-run shot. Swisher a couple of hits Cano with four RBIs two hits and an RBI for the man at the plate Jorge Posada check swing dangerous foul ball into the seats behind the plate two and one Right over the head of Hideki Matsui and into the seats, which are right on top of the action here at Fenway Park. Two and one. Here's everybody's okay. Good pitch by Del Carmen. Changed up on Posada. It's two and two. Fastball count. And Del Carmen pulls the string. Thirteen RBIs on the season for Posada. Damon with a two run shot here in the sixth. Just inside in a full count. That's a good combination after throwing a change up and a fastball count and then coming back with a fastball just misses inside. <laughs> Del Carmen gets Posada. Johnny Damon tied it. We are 8 8 into the bottom of the sixth. We welcome you back. Bottom of the sixth and the Flomax replay for today's game. Johnny Damon's home run that just tied it in the top of this sixth inning. Veritek called the pitch, never caught it. Ellsbury went deep for the Red Sox in the bottom of the fifth. A couple of left handed shots by a couple of left handed hitting outfielders. And there's Damon. A look at the pitch. Highlighted 
And the home run over the wall in right to make it 8-8. Eight, eight. And now Jose Veras. Fires a strike with Veritex showing bunt. About that he saw Angel Barroa at third base way back and was thinking about dropping one down. Good idea. He's still back there. Varis is coming off a great outing. The foul back and out of play. Three and a third in relief of Sabathia on Wednesday. In that 14 inning win over the Oakland A's that ended on the home run by Melky Cabrera. So Joe Girardi gave him a couple of days to recover and here he is on Saturday. Pitching to Veritek then Nick Green then Jacoby Ellsberg. That's high ball one. Veritek with the biggest swing of the day a two out grand slam in the fourth made it six five. Red Sox got three in the bottom of the fifth to make it eight six and now the Yankees have tied it eight eight. Not close and Posada. Looked like he was crossed up with nobody on base somehow and it counts two and two. Normally when a catcher goes out there after a pitch like this. It is a cross up and that was certainly the case. I think the reason uh, no harm no foul but the reason Posada went out there is to make sure if you do get a guy on second base or a runner on base that doesn't happen. Could result in a, a wild pitch pass ball or what have you. So the count two and two. And a strikeout starts the bottom of the sixth. So a good start for the outing for Jose Veras. Fastball out of the strike zone up. Most of your swinging strikeouts are on fastballs up or breaking balls down and out of the strike zone. You rarely, for instance, see a low fastball for a strike three, a swinging strike three. Here is Nick Green who at one point was a member of the Yankee organization and played in this rivalry for the Yankees back in 06 and Ken Rosenthal he's getting a chance and making the most of it so far with the Red Sox. Joe he also spent all of last season in the Yankees organization but he grew discouraged in spring training when he felt that Joe Girardi preferred Cody Ransom. Green had a terrible spring a terrible season. His next step was to sign with the Red Sox. Now it took injuries to two shortstops for him to get this chance and Julio Lugo is expected back Monday but here's Green with one last chance to prove to Joe Girardi that he's a better player than Cody Ransom. Here's a 1 1 pitch getting good rips he's been hitting the ball very well he has three straight two hit games. Julio Lugo tore the meniscus in his right knee during spring training as Ken said he's working his way back. Jed Lowry was the shortstop suffered through a one for 18 stretch and it turns out he needed surgery on his left wrist not season ending they hope to get him back in the middle of the year as this pitch hits green to put the go ahead run on. And I think green was more than willing once that pitch was headed his way more than willing to let it hit him. Hit him in the left arm and Nick appears to be all right. It appeared to be a breaking ball a backup slider. There's something of that nature. Here is Ellsbury who. Tied the game with a home run leading off in the fifth. Strike one and Jacoby got all of it. That made it six six. Two more runs for Boston scored and a two out two run double by Bay. Made it eight six Boston then Johnny Damon tied it with a home run. In the top of this frame here's a shot to left off the bat of Ellsbury off the wall. 
Throw in towards second, too late. It's a double for Ellsbury. Second and third, one out. When you're a runner at first base and there's a ball hit toward the monster, the one thing you do is check the outfielder's reaction. With Johnny Damon right there, the minute you see him turn toward the monster, you take off. That's how you gauge whether to go to third or not. Easy double, relatively easy double for Ellsbury. The key runner, the lead runner, Nick Green, going to third on that ball. And now Pedroia with second and third, only one out. So you've got Pedroia up now. You've got a base open. You've got David Ortiz on deck, who did hit an opposite field double his last time up, but who has struggled with a bat so far this season. The first from Varis. Tried to overthrow it. Missed ball one. Left handed pitcher Phil Koch is getting loose for the Yankees in their bullpen. The 1 0 to Pedroia. 2 0. Normally, in a situation like this, uh, and, and Joe Girardi, as an ex catcher, uh, has a great feel for the flow of a game. But normally, you'd play your infield at least halfway. But the way this game is going, you figure there's going to be a lot more runs scored. So that's why the Yankee infield's back now. Coming in to Pedroia to make it 2 and 1. The next from Veris skips in there, not what close. A and a great block by Posada, three and one. It's like one of Lundquist's plays with the Rangers. So you've got me a hockey fan. Right if the Rangers Predicting. beat the Caps, they play the Bruins, right? Yeah, they, they have uh, they have their next game, game six, I believe, tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. Early start at the Garden. Here's a 3-1 pitch. Pedroia full count. Any paying fan coming through the turnstiles when the Yankees and Red Sox get together. You're guaranteed to see action. You're guaranteed your stay at the park will not be a short one. Here's a 3 2 pitch, and that loads him up. And we'll see if Coke comes in to face David Ortiz, and he will. So after a strikeout to start the inning, Varis hit a batter, gave up a double, now a walk. Big Poppy coming up. Phil Coke coming out of the bullpen. Well, here is Phil Coke, the left hander, right into the action. Bases loaded, one out. David Ortiz digging his way in. 8 8, bottom of the sixth. Ortiz one for three, but struggling. Only eight RBIs, no home runs. Strike one, he was up there ready to swing. This includes today last two plus games 13 and a third innings pitched for that Yankee bullpen 229 pitches. And now Eduardo Ramirez a right hander getting loose. Here's the 0 1 to Ortiz. Checked his swing and a ball in the dirt. The shift is on. On the infield. The big part of it is that Baroa, the third baseman, is way off the line. Nick Green, the lead runner, could go halfway to the plate. 
That's right. That's exactly right. And there is no way Baroa can keep him from walking at least halfway down the line. Bases loaded, one out, one one pitch. Almost hit him up an in ball two. After the slider away, the fastball misses Ortiz inside. The rule of thumb, if you're the runner on at third base, is you try to go off as far as the third baseman is. So you're right, Nick Green could be down in there easily. Strike two on Ortiz, who is really grinding. And in this spot for a guy who is counted on to be the anchor in this lineup. Trying to come through against the Yankees. Over the years he's hit 25 homers driven in 90. Against New York pitching. Bases loaded one out 2 2 pitch. Joe Girardi will have to rely on a lot of inexperienced pitchers coming out of his bullpen. Not just the rest of the way here today but for the foreseeable future. The 2 2. In the dirt full count. into shallow right Swisher will drift make the catch almost dropped it one runner scores Pedroy is tagged out to end the inning but the run counts as Nick Green touched home plate prior to Dustin Pedroia being tagged for the out you don't see that happen often but that's a bad base running play by Dustin Pedroia. The Red Sox however do have the lead nine eight on a sack fly by David Ortiz back to Boston after a word from your local Fox station. Bottom three in the order for the Yankees Matsui first up against Del Carmen one run lead now for Boston nine eight. Matsui Baroa and Brett Gardner. Uh, against Del Carmen who relieved last inning allowed a one out double to Swisher but struck out two. What an odd way for the bottom of the sixth inning to end really with a double play on a sacrifice fly mm -hmm. that scored nine six in a scorebook with the throw from Swisher to Jeter who tagged Pedroia just after the run had scored. Nick Green crossed home plate and now Hideki Okajima the left hander gets loose for Boston. Matsui is over three and now one for four and the tying run is on with nobody out in the seventh and we go back to that last out the way the sixth inning ended. All types of frustration after this play develops. Watch Derek Jeter coming to your screen right in there. You can see Baroa going toward third. It looks like Jeter decoyed Pedroia, left the base open, and then went toward the base. Watch Big Poppy's reaction. Hey, come back here. And then Pedroia is upset also. He knew that he made a base running blunder. Here is Baroa who drops a bunt down foul. Strike one on Angel Baroa. If you are just joining us you look at Barroa head back to the plate here's what we've seen the Yankees were rolling with a six to nothing lead for those runs driven in by Robinson Cano and they had A.J. Burnett who looked dominant on the mound the Red Sox got five in the fourth highlighted by a Veritech Grand Slam three in the fifth led at eight six Red Sox blow the two run lead a two run home run by Johnny Damon in the sixth inning tied it. Bottom of the sixth inning a sack fly by David Ortiz 
has made it 9 8 Boston. The bunt is off and Barroa fouls it back strike two. Albaladejo the right hander is getting loose. He was good last night. Eduardo Ramirez had been getting loose earlier. Barroa one for three. The 0 2. On hell stays alive. On deck is Brett Gardner. As we go down the line on the scoreboard here at Fenway. Top of the seventh. Nine eight Boston. Here's the 0 2. Barroa checked his swing on ball one. Give you an idea about how good a player Barroa was early in his career. He was the rookie of the year in the American League in 1973. Second in the voting that year was Hideki Matsui. Fifth was Mark Teixeira. And here they are all three in the Yankee lineup tonight. And there is a big discrepancy in the bank account of all three. <laughs> You're right. Here's a one two pitch to the left side. Lowell will get the lead man and that's it. But Baroa does not advance the tying run into scoring position as he bounces into a five four four sub. Tomorrow NASCAR on Fox moves to the Talladega Super Speedway. Well, Kyle Busch will try to defend his title against a full field of the world's best drivers coverage of Sprint Cup Series racing from Talladega. It's tomorrow at 1 Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific in high def, only on Fox. By the way, Joe, if I said 73, I, I was uh, aging myself. At 2003, only 30 years later, Angel Barroa is not in his mid-50s. <laughs> one on, one out. And a ball up and away. At the plate is Brett Gardner. Staying in the bullpen is Okajima. On deck is Jeter. And a 2 0 count from Del Carmen. Gardner so far has struck out, grounded out, and lined out to center. His average is down to 222. The guy who's pushing him is Melky Cabrera, and he's been hot. There's a strike from Del Carmen. Cabrera has been showing some pop. He's a switch hitting outfielder, and he is going to be counted on a lot more than originally expected. The legs of Matsui aren't completely healthy, and Xavier Nady is on the disabled list. Here comes a 2-1. That's strike two. Good fastball from Del Carmen. Yeah, Joe Girardi saying with a twinkle in his eye that competition is very healthy between Gardner and Cabrera. He believes that they push each other. Cabrera's had a great attitude since being told he would not be an outfielder, an outfield starter as Gardner slaps at that pitch that was up and fouls it. It stays two and two. The series will conclude tomorrow night with Andy Pettit and Justin Masterson facing one another. The Yankees will be in Detroit after this weekend and Boston goes on a road trip. First stop is Cleveland. A check on the runner Barroa.
Now the 2 2 pitch is fouled again in case you have wandered on your television. You don't have to wonder what New England did with their pick in the first round 26. They traded it to Green Bay. Packers pick Clay Matthews linebacker from USC and five teams now have traded up in the first 26 picks of the 09 draft. Two balls two strikes one on one out one run lead for Boston here in the seventh. And a check swing on a pitch down and in full count. So Carmen had Okajima warming up behind him while he was pitching to Baroa. He's still getting loose with a right handed hitter on deck. He may stay in. Here's a runner going. A base hit through the open left side. Baroa goes to third. Good piece of hitting by Brett Gardner. And now the tying run is 90 feet away. First and third one out here in the seventh. That's some inexperience on Nick Green's part. The, the thing you do with the runner running, you don't vacate your position. You can see Nick Green shading towards second base and moving about two steps. Now, I'm not sure if he makes that play anyway, in fairness. But the point is, as you hold your position, you come in a couple of steps, then see what the hitter does, and then go towards second base. Instead, the base hit got through the left side. Barola went to third, and now the Yankees have what they want. Tying run is at third. Only one out. Go ahead run at first and Derek Jeter who has been on base three times in this game stands in. Good start to this season with a bat for Derek Jeter hitting 306. And a foul off to the right. Interesting thing if Gardner were on at first and there were nobody on at third he'd try to steal second base. But now if you try to steal second base and you're thrown out then that's the second out of the inning and you could lose the fly ball to tie the ball game. So that's what's going through Gardner's mind right now. His presence also opens up that entire right side where Jeter likes to go. This one is in off his bat. For strike two. Nothing into the count. First and third, one out. And Del Carmen wants the strikeout. One ball two strikes on deck the left handed hitting Damon in the bullpen Okajima but the battle now is Del Carmen against Jeter in a one run game. Nobody took the bait the runners stay at first and third. The one two is in under the hands of Jeter two and two. Everything to Derek Jeter has been inside. Check on Gardner. Derek Jeter so far this season with 11 RBIs. 
looking for his 260th hit against the Red Sox including the postseason. Will they stay inside. They do runner goes throw down too late second and third with one out. Gardner got a great jump no chance for Veritech and a hit could give New York the lead. Watch Veritech peak toward third base. No chance for Baroa coming in since he represents a tying run. So Gardner waited 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 and finally stole second on the 2 2 pitch. Runners at second and third one out. Del Carmen steps off. Now Euclid can move toward the bigger part of the field instead of having to guard against Gardner at first. Del Carmen's pounded Jeter in. 3 2 pitch and a big strikeout to away. Third strikeout for Del Carmen, and that'll be his final pitch of this game. Argu arguably the most important at bat of this game Derek Jeter down on strikes on the fastball from Del Carmen three strikeouts in an inning and two thirds from Manny Del Carmen that was a big out second and third two out Damon coming up tenth game of the season for Hideki Okajima and he comes in. Trying to protect a one run lead. It's 9 8 Boston, top of the seventh. Runners on at second and third. Two out now for Johnny Damon, who tied the game in the sixth inning with a two run home run. Hitting 326 to start the year. A strike over the outside corner in the sixth inning against Beckett. An 8 6 game became 8 8. Red Sox regained the lead with a run in the bottom of the sixth. Moments ago, it was second and third, one out. Jeter struck out. Now, Okajima misses with ball one. I'd say, well, with the left hander, Okajima. Joe Girardi has Melky Cabrera now who's a switch hitter. You could bring the right hander in to leave him in to play in the outfield. There are a lot of people in the American League think that Hideki Okajima is tougher on right handers than he is on left handers. That's why Damon's still in the game. Pretty good rip there at count one and two. Reason for that is against right handed batters Okajima has that that split finger that goes away from him. and for the most part against a left hander you rob him of that pitch. Still one and two. Red Sox in the bottom of this inning will have the four, five, and six batters. Euclid, Drew, and Bay. And right now it's between Okajima and Damon as to what the scoreboard will look like. Great speed with a trail runner, Gardner at second. Two out. And a ground ball under the glove of Pedroya. The Gold Glove Award winner kicks it. Two run score. Damon is safe at second, and the Yankees regain the lead. I think if you asked Dustin Pedroia right now how he should have fielded that ball, I think he would have said that I should have backhanded it. Sometimes your feet get tangled when you're when you're moving to your right, moving to your right, moving to your right. I think that's what happened. It's an error on Pedroia. But I think Dustin would have been better off trying to backhand that ball instead of getting in front of it. First error of the season for Pedroia. Now a walk will be handed to Teixeira. Fourth time he walks today. First intentional walk. 
And the Red Sox will turn Nick Swisher around and make him bat right handed. What is it about these two teams that make this happen all the time. It just doesn't matter who's on the mound. Or... It doesn't. Doesn't matter whether it's regular season postseason. So the book on Del Carmen is closed and those are two unearned runs that score against him. But he goes an inning and two thirds three hits. Three strikeouts, no walks. Pedroia, who's been just about automatic after that rough first month in the big league level, could not corral that hard hit ball to his right. And now Nick Swisher, with the Yankees up by a run, 10 to 9, stands in with runners at first and second and two out. Yeah, that was an error on Pedroia, but you're right. I know your inference. It, it was a tough play. So Johnny Damon has had a big big last two at bats two run home run in the sixth inning to tie it even though that goes down as an error as they have Damon caught to end the inning Damon's hard hit ball gives the Yankees their lead back they haven't led since the bottom of the fifth just another day at Fenway time to stretch. Yankees up by one. Fox Saturday Baseball presented by DirecTV, sponsored by Cadoan. By Ortho Weed Be Gone Max, kills weeds, not lawns, guaranteed. And by Kentucky Grilled Chicken, get a two piece meal for just $3.99 and unthink KFC. Here's Euclid, and here come the Red Sox. Kevin Euclid rips one down into the corner and he starts the seventh inning with a double. Third time in a row he's been on base as he greets Alba Ladejo with a shot into the corner. The only guy hitting the ball harder than Kevin Euclid in the major leagues in April is Albert Pujols of the Cardinals. You mentioned the word laser earlier. And I don't think it's any more appropriate. You're talking about Euclid or Pujols. Here's J.D. Drew. Tying run at second with nobody out. 10 to 9 game. And a strike from the big right hander who worked well in last night's game. Eduardo Ramirez is back up. That's strike two. On deck is Jason Bay. He's had a big game. J.D. Drew 0 for 1 with two walks and a run scored. Runner at second, nobody out, and a roller to the right side. Advances Euclid. He's at third with one out. And that's our direct TV game break. We go down to Chris Rose. Yeah, Joe, Tim just mentioned him, Albert Pujols. And, you know, our buddy Dan Patrick always wonders, who is BCW worthy, as in bathroom can wait? How about this guy? You're not going anywhere when he's up. His second grand slam of the season, eighth of his career, 25 ribs, leads the big leagues. Cards take care of the Cubs, 8-2. to two. Watch your favorite out-of-market team on DirecTV. Joe? How about seven home runs for Pujols? Another grand slam, and he has just lit up on Fox Saturday Baseball so far this season. I think a, a lot of people still contend that Alex Rodriguez is the best player in the game. I don't. I think Pujols has surpassed Rodriguez uh, not because of the injury or anything I think that happened a couple of years ago and I think Albert Pujols is the best player in baseball. There's an intentional pass being handed to Jason Bay Mike Lowell will bat with first and third one out. Interesting that leading by a run in the seventh with what we've seen so far here today 
that the Yankees and Joe Girardi would walk the go ahead run on with one out here in the seventh inning and bring in Mike Lowell. I think it's a good move. I mean we talked earlier about Lowell uh, not being as mobile as he was. He's never been a fast runner. I think you set up the double play and instead of bringing the infield in with Bay hitting you could put the infield in double play depth. There's a mild risk of walking the go ahead run on but I think the the I think the action outrays the the risk in this particular instance. Euclid led off with a double move to third and the ground out by Drew then the walk to Jason Bay and here is Lowell the only guy in each starting lineup who hasn't been on base yet today. Struck out twice and lined out against Burnett. First and third one out. A distinct disadvantage for the Yankees and Joe Girardi as he is dealing with a bullpen that has three young guys that I'm sure he would like to at all costs avoid bringing into a game like this with this kind of pressure. That's in at the knees. Good fastball, one ball, one strike. Law thought the pitch was low, and you could see his point. Big difference hitting two balls and no strikes as opposed to one and one. Runners on at first and third, one out. And a check on Bay. Melanson is the young right hander who was just called up David Robertson and Steven Jackson are out in that bullpen. They have been seated so far for New York. The one one overpowering fastball Lowell was late talking to himself it's one and two. One thing Mike Lowell does best with two strikes is to hit the ball the other way. He's actually cultivated that type of approach since joining the Red Sox. And a shot down the left field line. Into the corner, a three run home run Lowell. 12 10 Boston. Fastball that Mike Lowell rode on out of here. Now he has been on base, but it wasn't for long. A three run shot. Back and forth, back and forth we go. In the bottom of the seventh, it's now Boston up 12 to 10. Edouard Ramirez coming in out of the bullpen. Albaladejo, Jonathan Albaladejo is in the dugout after being knocked out on the home run by Mike Lowell. One third of an inning. Three runs on two hits, a walk, and now Eduardo Ramirez in a 12 10 game in favor of Boston. Jason Veritek with one out, nobody on. Veritek with a grand slam in this game one for three and a strike from Ramirez Yankees put Brian Bruni on the disabled list with a bad elbow here's a drive in a left field back is Damon for out number two. And in a game like this his presence Brian Bruni's presence is sorely missed by New York Bruni went through a stretch where he retired 22 consecutive batters and he had kind of taken over that primary setup role. 
But now with names like Al Baladejo, Eduardo Ramirez, Jose Veras, and Koch, the Yankees have scored 10 runs and trailed by two. Here's a pitch for ball one to Nick Green. Joe, I was thinking the same thing. I mean, the Yankees have the the opening series at Yankee Stadium. They have all the home runs hit. They have the 14 inning game on Thursday. Last night's game, 11 innings. Today's game with all with 12 runs scored. How can you not feel that your bullpen is exhausted and it's April 25th? Well they look exhausted. They do. They're pitching it like they're exhausted. Here's a 1 1. Hard hit a couple of hops stays down on Jeter made a good play and the inning is over. But big damage done and it was Mike Lowell who gets in on the fun. The go ahead three run shot. 12 10 Boston after seven. We go into the eighth inning here at Fenway Park Yankees bat Swisher is first up remember Swisher was at the plate when Okajima picked off Damon to end the top of the seventh inning then the Red Sox went back to work double by Euclid tensional walk to Bay a three run shot by Lowell and now Swisher pops it up into left center field and Bay comes on to make the catch one out Swisher now two for five and it's time for our Bank of America fan cam you want to show the world it's not like it's love get MLB banking only from Bank of America we already talked about him Arthur Gidden who tomorrow turns 100 years old was a 13 year old bat boy for the Boston Braves back in the 20s. And here at Fenway Park, and still here at Fenway Park, Bloomfield, Connecticut. And it's not Big Poppy, it's Big Pappy. And a strike is into Robinson Cano. Cano is hit a two run home run, a two run double. Here's a fly ball into right. Drew is back. Ball carrying at the wall. It's gone in a one run game. Second of the day for Robinson Cano. And it's 12 to 11 here in the eighth. Talked about it earlier. He had a miserable April last year and is out of the shoot so quickly. You think of where the Yankees would be without the bat of Robinson Cano. He hit 151 last April. And that home run with one out here in the eighth inning, it appears, is going to chase Okajima with Jorge Posada coming up. Right hander Ramon Ramirez has been getting loose. Back to the bullpen go the Red Sox. It's 12 to 11. Boston, top of the eighth. Jorge Posada coming up after the homer by Cano. Outfield and the no doubles defense, no extra base hits. On three and two with one out, a foul out of play. Yeah, the one thing the Red Sox love about Ramirez, he was traded for Coco Crisp from the Kansas City Royals. He's a high ball pitcher who doesn't give up a lot of home runs. He had 71 appearances last year, only two home runs allowed. So he can get the strikeout with a high fastball and yet doesn't give up that many long balls. On three and two Posada takes a one out walk and the tying run is on. 
Sixth walk handed to the Yankees in this game. Ramon Ramirez comes out of the bullpen, walks the first batter he faces, and here is Hideki Matsui, who has two home runs on the season, one hit today, one for four with a single in the seventh. We're in the top of the eighth, one on, one out. There's the tying run. First to Matsui poured in for strike one. Hey, Posada is a slow runner. I don't think Kevin Euclid holds the runner on in this situation. Matsui has grounded to the right side three times in his forward bats today. And that hole is open on the on the right side. So if you get Euclid off the bag and that cuts down on that hole right there. The 0 one strike two. On deck is Angel Barroa. The 0-2 pitch is hit in the air to center field. Back is Ellsbury at the wall. Off the wall. Posada will hold it third on a double by Matsui. And it's second and third one out. And a good job of acting a little by Ellsbury and centers. That ball was over his head and Posada only went first to third on that shot off the wall. I was thinking the same thing. That's a superb play by Ellsbury with a bit of a decoy right there. And now making the play on the carom on one hop and getting it quickly back into the infield. Well, here's the one move that Joe Girardi can make. He's got a short bench. He's got an extra infielder in Ramiro Pena who can take over at third for Baroa as Melky Cabrera will come off the bench. He's been hot. Second and third one out. And the Yankees are a hit away from regaining the lead. That means the only other bench player for Girardi is Jose Molina, the other catcher. Cabrera with runners at second and third, one out. Strike one. Hitting coach for the Yankees, Kevin Long, has said that Melky Cabrera has moved up in the box this year, and he is really turning on that pitch inside. Pitch is down for ball one. Cabrera ended the homestand for the Yankees. Their opening six game homestand with a two homer game and a walk off 14 inning home run to beat Oakland. That's back to the pitcher. Ramirez has Posada hung up between third and home. Good base running by Posada to allow not only Matsui to get to third, but Melky Cabrera to get down to second base. Posada is out, second and third, two away. So the fielder's choice and Ramirez fed Veritek, who took Posada back to the bag. The good play second and third when you can tie the game. Posada and the Yankees hopeful that Ramirez messes the play up some way. Otherwise, you end up with second and third and two out also. Or anyway. So now it's Brett Gardner. The pinch hitter Melky Cabrera. Who hit for Baroa. Ramiro Pena will. Take over at third most likely he's at second and Gardner takes a ball up and away Brett with a single a stolen base and a run scored last inning. 
Good speed with that go ahead run at second base two out in the person of Melky Cabrera. The 1 0. One ball one strike. Gardner with three RBIs on the season. Strike two. A couple of high fastballs from Ramirez. Gardner can't lay off him and now he's in the hole as Damaso Marte gets loose. up there again another foul ball the plate 12 11 the Red Sox lead it here is a one two pitch way up and away Yankees have scored in every inning except two and the Red Sox have scored in every inning since the fourth. Ramon Ramirez is set in the 2 2. Ground ball, Pedroia to his right, gloves and throws for the out. So only one run in the inning. On the second home run of the day by Cano, there's his first, there's his second off Okajima. 12 11 after seven and a half. Boston on top. Fox Saturday Baseball presented by DirecTV, sponsored by Just for Men. Stay in the game with Just for Men hair color. By Burger King, who reminds you to have it your way. And by X-Men Origins, Wolverine. The summer begins this Friday, only in theaters. Eduardo Ramirez deals outside ball one, top of the order, Jacoby Ellsbury, who has Homer doubled. Leading it off, bottom of the eighth, 12 to 11, Boston. And another wild game between the Yankees and Red Sox at Fenway. New third baseman, no surprise, it is Ramiro Pena, and only one bench player left for Girardi, Jose Molina. His other catcher. Here's a 1-1. Two balls and a strike. Jonathan Papelbon getting loose. He'll be next. That is a foul ball, and Teixeira shows off how good that glove hand is. It's two and two. Tay, the left hander. Joined by David Robertson. Here's a 2 2. Reach for it and popped it foul. I think interference was called. I believe, I believe Posada interfered 
with Ellsbury. It was a, it was a funky swing right there. And with nobody on base, you always want to stay back as far as you can. And I think Ellsbury hit the mitt of Posada, so it'll be an error on Posada and no time at bat for Ellsbury. So the leadoff man is on with nobody out for Pedroia. I remember George Kissel, the great uh, teacher of the Cardinals, used to say, with nobody on base, don't take a chance. Scoot back an inch or two more if you think it, there is any chance. Now, you know, with the runner on base, you have to be ready to throw, so it's understandable for a catcher to come out of there. But with nobody on base, it's not. Red Sox trying to get a little more breathing room as they lead by one in the eighth. Pedroia not tipping his hand if he is up there to bunt with Ellsbury at first or tease on deck. He might do it. I don't, I don't think you I don't think you bunt right here. Pedroia is too good a hitter. He's last year's MVP. Plus Ellsbury has great speed to steal. Pena backs up at third. He was in. And that's upstairs ball one. Pedroia has been on base all four times. He's been to the plate. Two walks, two singles. Did make a base running mistake in this game and committed an error that led to two runs. Back in the seventh. Think about all the things that have happened, all the elements of the game that have taken place. And here's the eight innings of a regular season game. One of the beauties of baseball. Extraordinary. Ellsbury takes his lead. And Ramirez steps off. There he goes. Yankees pitch out. Throw down by Posada. Not in time. There'll be an argument. It looked like Cano got the glove down on the legs of Ellsbury, and Joe Girardi is out to argue with the second base umpire, Brian Onora. Well, it's rare when a one ball and no strike pitch out occurs. A strong throw by Posada, but an errant throw, but a terrific tag. By Cano, and it looked like he had him on the leg. In fact, he had him by about a step, even though Ellsbury went in there head first. And yeah, he was out. So the Red Sox have a runner at second on catcher's interference and then a stolen base with a missed call at second base. And now Pedroia with a 2 0 count. Nobody out in the inning. Ball three. Pedroia, six RBIs on the season. Takes a strike. After all this, the Red Sox have exactly what they want. A lead in the bottom of the eighth, a chance for more, and they have their closer, Papelbon, ready to go after working an inning last night. A Boston team that at one point trailed six to nothing with A.J. Burnett rolling on the mound. That's foul. Here's that tag at second base with the glove down on the legs of Ellsbury well before Jacoby got his hands on the bag. But safe was the call and a 3 2 count now on Pedroia.
On deck is Ortiz. Marte has been warming the last two innings. We may see another pitcher for the Yankees. Have gone through Burnett, Veras, Coke, Albaladejo. Now Eduardo Ramirez, who finished off the seventh, working the eighth. And another 3 2 pitch, another foul ball. Tonight on Fox, Cops. I think we'll get at that a little after 8. Eastern, and then America's Most Wanted. 7.52 on the scoreboard clock here at Fenway. And a day dominated by hitting. We thought it would be dominated by pitching coming in with a matchup. Here's another base hit. Pedroia on base again. Throw by Gardner. Not in time. 13 to 11 Boston. And that'll be it for Edouard Ramirez. Talk about a battle. And then on the 3 2 pitch, the fourth 3 2 pitch, Pedroia won against Ramirez. Damaso Marte will come in after that high delivery ripped into center by Dustin Pedroia to score Ellsbury to make it 13 11 Boston here at Fenway in the bottom of the eighth. We had the chance to spend yesterday morning shooting a promo with Michael J. Fox, which was kind of the culmination of what has been a real effort and something that Fox Sports is very proud of. Proud to support the Michael J. Fox Foundation for Parkinson's research. It's dedicated to finding a cure for Parkinson's through an aggressive research program. To learn more, you can visit, and we ask you to, MichaelJFox.org. He is an inspiration, a great guy to have a chance to meet. You and I had a, an enjoyable morning yesterday oh with him. Boy. And what a remarkable human being is doing so much good. And he doesn't let anything slow him down. No, he doesn't. Thomas Marte will deal with David Ortiz. David with a sack fly the front end of a unique double play back in the sixth. This one gets away. Down to second is Pedroia. We'll see if it's a wild pitch or a pass ball. It's a pass ball. You talk about a rough inning for Jorge Posada already and there are still no outs. Interference call and then on a pitch out a throw to the first base side they did not get Ellsbury even though the replay showed that he was out and now the pass ball. Last night Marte was on the mound in the bottom of the 11th when Kevin Euclid took him out. For the game winner a 5 4 win here's a line drive into right right at Swisher tag by Pedroia. He goes to third and is there with one out. Good base running by Dustin Pedroia. And now with Euclid coming up and the left handed hitting J.D. Drew on deck. Joe Girardi calls for an intentional walk. They will turn their ukes to booze for the Yankees approach with one of the fan favorites here at Fenway. This will put runners on at the corners with one out. And we'll bring J.D. Drew to the plate. The Yankees in the ninth inning against Papelbon. 
will have the top of their lineup Jeter Damon and Teixeira. If anybody gets on Swisher for a guy who has struggled of late in Papelbon against the Yankees. There's ball four last ten appearances for Papelbon against the Yankees three losses a blown save and an ERA over nine and a half. Meanwhile the bullpen for the Yankees. Joe Girardi just looks worn out and his bullpen is worn out here on the 25th of April. Posada now trying to communicate with Girardi in the bullpen and Joe is talking about playing the infield halfway I believe because of the speed of Drew if he hits a ball sharply to a middle infielder you can't play in normal double play depth and that's why Cano and Jeter are both in now lead runner is Pedroia runner at first is Euclid and now a visit. Now Cano and Jeter want to talk about exactly what they want to do. When you bring the infield in that means that you have nullified the double play. Your play is going to be home. If you play it halfway you still have the double play in order. Joe talking to Mick Kelleher. Strike one. Mick a good infielder came up in the Cardinal chain and is responsible for instructions of the infielders coming up on a four hour game here on Saturday at Fenway 13 11 Boston strike two and talking to Joe Girardi he did say that he thinks Marte and his effort last night even though he got the loss was the best he's thrown this season. Pretty good life to that high fastball by the bat of J.D. Drew in the count's 0 and the count 0-2. Ball one. Infield is in one out runners at the corners 13 11 Boston Drew takes ball two outside two and two J.D. Drew has been on base twice but those were the were with walks he does not have a base hit in this game has bounced into a double play with the bases loaded nobody out just up and away a full count right handed hitting Bay on deck David Robertson getting ready in the bullpen three two to Drew and a strikeout for out number two it is eight oh one in the east we're about to have a pitching change it would take the nine oh one to give you an entire recap of what we've seen here this afternoon we have seen almost literally everything. From a grand slam down to a catcher's interference and whatever fits in between those two extremes. David Robertson will come in out of the bullpen. I'll read this graphic during the break and we'll discuss it when we come back. Robertson into the game. Robertson the new pitcher did this game start yesterday by the way. Four o'clock one day. <laughs> I think it was today, and it's almost exactly four hours from now that we started back this afternoon. It's a beautiful day weather wise, and fans have had fun. They've seen everything, and at oh, some man. point, as we play here in the bottom of the eighth inning, first and third, two out bait coming up, Robertson into the game. They'll watch Papelbon come out of that bullpen and try and save it. 
And then think about the big picture for the Yankees last night. They come on the road to Fenway Park. They come off their first homestand. They have a two run lead that they have in the hands of Mariano Rivera. He gives up a two out two run game tying home run to this man Jason Bay. Euclid wins it in the 11th so a heartbreaking loss last night and then today a six to nothing lead behind A.J. Burnett who was rolling and looked like he had brought his best stuff to the park here today. Well five runs in the fourth three in the fifth one in the sixth three more in the seventh. One here in the eighth a 13 to 11 lead. The Yankees are in danger of dropping two tough ones here at Fenway Park to start this series with Masterson and Pettit going tomorrow night. Here comes a 1 0 from Robertson. 2 0 with first and third two out. Add to that insult all of the injury that the Yankees have had to endure here in the first month of the season. And it's been a rough start even though the Yankees begin the day two games over 500 just three games out in the AL East behind Toronto. Two and one on Bay. Toronto took it to the White Sox last night. They're leading again tonight. Pitch is high three and one Lowell on deck. A combination of Pedroia and Euclid the runners on and a three one pitch to Bay right down the middle three and two. Again top of the order for New York in the ninth inning so this one is not over. Applebaum getting ready Robertson trying to keep it a two run game. And that loads him up. And here's Lowell. He did not reach base until his last plate appearance. Went against Al Baladejo, hit a three run home run down the left field line to put the Red Sox back on top. That made it 12 10. It's now 13 to 11. Strike one, and here's what it looked like. Somehow that ball stayed fair. And somehow, yeah, somehow he kept it fair by bringing the hands in. And a huge hit to give the Red Sox the lead. Here's the 0-1 and a shot in the air to left field. Back is Damon at the wall. Cannot make the catch. All three runs are going to score. Big day for Mike Lowell. And it's 16 to 11 here in the eighth. Now it takes a Red Sox fan to realize the extent that Johnny Damon will go to make a catch. You can hear it clanging around rattling Johnny appears to be OK. Well I look back at that uh, frightening collision that he had with Damian Jackson back in 2003. October 6th 2003 in the division series when he collided with Damian Jackson but Johnny appears to be OK. Here is Veritech now. Sixteen to eleven and all of the scoring for the Red Sox since the fourth. Five in the fourth three in the fifth one in the sixth three in the seventh four in the eighth. Leading by five now their biggest lead of the day. And the count one and one. And we said it back. When A.J. Burnett left after five that in a battle of the bullpens. The Red Sox would have the advantage in these arms young and old for the Yankees have been knocked around coming out of the pen here at Fenway. Two balls and a strike on Veritek who hit a grand slam. 
to catapult the Red Sox back into the game in the fourth. 38 runs total allowed by the Yankees between the last two Saturdays. Baratek out in front hooks it foul. Two and two. You talked about that collision between Johnny Damon and Damian Jackson the division series out in Oakland. Pedro Martinez was pitching that night and Johnny and Damian colliding. Oh man. That was when Johnny was a member of the Red Sox. Johnny suffering a concussion. Blurred vision. Nine months of pain and headaches after that collision. Mm. Mike Lowell did not have a hit until the seventh. His last two at bats he's driven in six runs to tie a career high for RBIs in a game. Three run home run in the seventh a three run double with two out here in the eighth. And a five run Boston lead a chance for more a three two pitch to Veritek. And strike three ends the inning. We go into the ninth inning. Papelbon is ready to go. Will he appear? 16 11 Boston. Here is Jonathan Papelbon who will work the ninth inning. Red Sox up by five with the top of the order coming up for the Yankees. Cheater Damon and Teixeira. Hey, by the way, while we have a minute, while Papelbon continues to get loose. All of us with our crew and at Fox Sports want to send our best wishes and a speedy recovery to Bob Tomaselli. who was our low first camera operator hit in the eye during pregame warm ups. Went immediately to the hospital. And we understand is doing relatively well resting back at home. So our thoughts are with you and anxious to get you back out to the ballpark as Papelbon will work the ninth inning. Okajima would be the winner. Albaladejo would get the loss. No save opportunity for Papelbon, but he's just trying to end a long day at the ballpark and restore a little order as Derek Jeter, who's been on base three times with two hits of walks, yourself, stole a base, Jeter. scored two runs, is first up. From Beckett to Del Carmen to Okajima to Ramirez and now Papelbon. The first to Jeter in for strike one. Tells you something about this game, Joe, when at least three Yankee hitters will hit six times in this game. And yet the Yankees still are losing by five. In a 16 to 11 game. Mm. Here's an 0 1 to Jeter. Hitting 3 0 1. He takes a ball up and in. Meanwhile, the Yankees started with Burnett, went to Veras, Coke, Albaladejo, Eduardo Ramirez, Marte, Robertson. The 1 1 pitch from Papelbon. With flash bulbs popping around this ballpark. I'm thinking the same thing. I mean, normally you, you see uh, all the flash bulbs at the beginning of a game, beginning certainly of a, of a big game. Now, here we're seeing it in the top of the ninth inning of a 16 to 11 game. Well, they've been waiting. Jeter and Papelbon confrontation. <laughs> Here's a 2 1. 2 and 2. Not just an isolated instant. I mean, they continue. There we go. So a 2 2 count on Jeter. <laughs> Do you hear that line? Some guy just yelled that foul ball that Jeter just hit. It would have been a home run in your stadium. <laughs> I heard him. <laughs> oh, it's classic. What a great line. Two balls, two strikes on Jeter leading it off in the ninth. <laughs> and a ball outside. Three and two. With these flashballs popping, this is like 
dipped into the surreal. Here. Yeah, it is. It has. Hot. Yeah. Slider just misses from Papelbon. Here's a 3 2. Mentioned those numbers for Papelbon against the Yankees. Might be hard to believe for a guy who's been dominant since he got to the big leagues, but the last 10 appearances, three losses, a blown save, an ERA of 9.64 against the Yankees, and opponents have hit 366. In the last 10 games that Papelbon has faced the Yankee hitters. Allowing a couple of home runs along the way. Here is another 3 2 pitch and another foul ball. So the next to Johnny Damon with Teixeira to hit after Damon is high two and one. Yankees trying to stay after it and trying to rally against Jonathan Papelbon a leadoff walk now a two one pitch Damon. With a little flare that's caught by Nick Green, the shortstop, one out. And here comes Teixeira, the producer of today's game, Pete Macheska. The director is Bill Webb. Associate director is Fran Morrison. The broadcast associate, Brian Biederman. Technical producer, Sid Drexler. And the technical director is Jonathan Evans. Free game show produced by Don Bowie. The highlights coordinator is Janice Kazaza. The technical supervisor, Jack Simmons. The senior producer of Fox Sports, Bill Brown, and the executive producers are David Hill and Ed Gorin. Thanks to Steve Horn, our editorial consultant in the booth. And Dave Schwalbe, our stage manager. First pitch is strike two to Shera. Wayne Fiddleman, who is working the numbers down in the truck as well. Applebaum with that glare in, ready with. And 0 1 pitch. Strike two. <laughs> Nothing in two on to Shera. Through all this, to share it does not have a hit. He has been walked four times. The 0 2 skips in. Ball one. Up over 1,000 hits in his career is to share it. 
Without a big rally here in the ninth inning, the Yankees will be trying to avoid a sweep. The Red Sox will try and give it to them tomorrow night behind Masterson. Runner at second, one out. That's Jeter out there, and ball two evens the count to Teixeira. That's high. Ball three, three and two. So nothing's easy in any half inning. And even with Papelbon on the mound, he's struggling to throw strikes. Shara could walk for the fifth time in this game. A three two pitch. And a foul ball. You know when you think about this Yankee bullpen and the pitching in general and the rotation for Joe Girardi you've got Chin Ming Wong trying to rehabilitate and get more strength in his legs you've got Phil Hughes who likely it hasn't been announced but likely could get the start on Tuesday in Detroit pitching very well with a 3 and 0 record at Triple A and ERA of one point eight. I want to get Ken Rosenthal in on the discussion about this Yankee pitching situation but they're going to need help for their bullpen here at some point especially if Bruni is lost for an extended period of time another foul ball you wonder Ken Rosenthal if that will resurrect the talk of moving Jabba Chamberlain out of the rotation where he's been OK and back into the bullpen where in his big league career he's been dominant. Joe a couple of things would have to happen for that to become realistic. One Bruni would have to be out for some time. They think it might only be 15 days. Two Hughes would have to pitch really well. But ultimately they're going to need to address that bullpen somehow. In short term there are a number of relievers out there who have been designated for assignment. One of them a former Yankee Luis Vizcaino. Perhaps one of those guys could help. Now a walk by Papelbon to Teixeira who walks for the fifth time in this game. Two walks in the inning. The Yankees aren't finished yet as Nick Swisher will step in. Can realize the plight of the bullpen when if that's true that what Ken just said. Signing guys who have been let go from other teams in April. That, that's alarming. Well, they've had to dip down already so yeah. many times mm -hmm. to their minor leagues to try and just find guys. And it's been a shuttle already. We saw Anthony Claggett come into a game last week on Saturday, not farewell, get sent right out. And now the young guys like Steven Jackson and Robertson, they're back up as Swisher fouls one straight back. Robinson Cano on deck. Mark Melanson is a young guy that they like a lot who they've called up. I think he's got a chance didn't have a great spring off to a good start. In the minor leagues. They may have to here shortly see what they have in him as Swisher fouls it for strike two. The situation for Terry Francona is different. He's got options. Not only does he have Papelbaum, but he's got Takashi Saito, who has closed games and done so very well for the Dodgers. And if this is a long outing and it's already into that neighborhood for Papelbaum tomorrow night, if he needs to give Papelbaum a night off, Saito is another guy who can close a game already has during this past week for the Red Sox guy who saved 34 games for the Dodgers two years ago. Here comes an 0 2 pitch to Swisher two on with one out and a strikeout that splitter in the dirt two away. 
Papelbon does not rely on that pitch that often, but uses it very effectively against Swisher. So Cano is at this point trying to add to what is a tremendous game here at Fenway Park. He's hit two homers. He's driven in five. He's got three extra base hits. And he bats with two on two out in the ninth. Ball one. Last night 11 innings Boston won it 5 4 tonight. Slash this afternoon. Staring at a nine inning game but a game that. Has seen 27 runs cross the plate to this point. 16 for the Red Sox. Here's a 1 0 to Robinson Cano. Strike one. Cano taking all the way. Posada on deck. The Yankees need two more base runners to have a chance. Two on with two out, down by five. Top of the ninth, 1 1 pitch from Papelbon. They've chased a high delivery, strike two. And this crowd, which has seen a lot of action here this afternoon and into tonight to its feet hoping this will be the last pitch and what is a four hour 18 minute game to this point By Veritek, who's had a long day, two and two. Two balls, two strikes on Cano. Red Sox up by five and another foul. 95 out of the right hand of Jonathan Papelbon. Cano, who was added to a career mark of 351, that's his average here at Fenway Park. Another 2 2 pitch from Jonathan Papelbon on its way. And a foul tip. Keeps the game alive. Cano just got a piece of a good pitch down from Papelbon. Game can't go forever. <laughs> I think that's the same guy who said that ball would have been a home run in your park. He just yelled out, This game could go on forever. Two balls, two strikes. And a pop up, shallow left center field, coming to get it, Ellsbury. He's there. Red Sox win 16 to 11. We'll come back to Boston and Fenway Park. To wrap up a long day of baseball. Final score, Boston 16, Yankees 11. Back after this from your local Fox station.
There's the final. Boston wins it. Four hour, 21 minutes. That's what it took. Same as last night's game and same result as the Red Sox have won the first two games of this series. 16-11 today. Tomorrow, don't miss NASCAR Sprint Cup racing from Talladega starting at 1 Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. Next week, Fox Saturday Baseball, May 2nd, presented by DirecTV. Mets at Phillies. Astros at Braves. The Indians at the Tigers all starts at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific. Promotional consideration paid for by the following. For more information on today's game and for the latest information on Major League Baseball, log on to FoxSports.com, powered by MSN, the world's favorite sports site. Now for Tim McCarver, Ken Rosenthal, and Chris Rose. Joe Buck, so long from Boston. You've been watching Fox Sports. Your home for the 2009 Major League Baseball All-Star Game. Red Sox win it by five. Danger looms at the baddest track on the planet. Live from Talladega, tomorrow, 1 Eastern, 10 Pacific, on Fox. This has been a presentation of Fox Sports. Home to the All-Star Game. The American League Championship Series and the World Series. America's Grand Game is on Fox. We are.